rivalries reignited. Historic heavyweights. The spiciest of derbies. New kids on the block. The best leagues in the land are back. Tom Hitchcock crashes. Tom Hitchcock goes. Tom Hitchcock scores. Leaving it all out there. A steamroller has just charged through. Dynasty, destiny, drop. Your Women's National League Cup champions. Future stars set to shine. Oh, Rick, it's been a fire all season. Champagne rugby, look no further. The score one of the most memorable tries. Durham University Buck Super Rugby League champions. But the truth is, in this league, it's anyone's on the day. And it's full time. It is six wins from six for Swansea. Entertainment guaranteed. Bucks Super Rugby. Women's National League. Bucks Rugby is back. Kroiso and Noswaith Tha. Welcome everyone, good evening. We are here at King Koi Campus's Rugby One pitch for the final Bucks Super Rugby fixture in Cardiff Mets campaign at home and they are taking on High Flyers Loughborough University who could claim the Buck Super Rugby title this evening. And I've got a very excited Mr. Buck Super Rugby alongside me in the form of Dave Rogers. Dave, thank you for coming down on such a miserable evening. Are you excited for the game ahead of us? Never a miserable evening at King Koi Campus. And it's never a miserable evening when we've got a game like this with so much at stake as well. Um, Cardiff Met, for a little while, looked like they were going to be the team who were, who were vying for the trophy at the end of the season. Hasn't gone their way, but they got the chance to build a bit of momentum now going into the playoffs. As for Loughborough, they could lift the trophy for the first time in the Buck Super Rugby era. And I think no matter what your allegiances are, we can all agree that a new name on a great trophy is great for the sport. Absolutely. Now, it's not just this game that we've been treated mm. to on King Koi Campus today. We've just come off the back of the Women's National League quarterfinal between Cardiff Met and Loughborough University as well. We've got a try that we're going to look at as well, Dave, because it's one of my favourites. It's actually <laughs> what I feel like secured the win for Cardiff Met. So if we take a look at the screen here, I'm going to get your opinion on it. It was Cardiff Met's third try in this game and basically potentially sealed the win because it created such a big gap between them and Loughborough University. Yeah, yeah. It, it meant that they just kept going forward with that momentum and won the game. Well, it was a brilliant game game and it ebbed and flowed and the and the and the and the lead changed hands what three or four times uh, Cardiff Met got themselves ahead Loughborough came back Bo Wescom Evans scored a beautiful individual try that made it 12-7 and at that point Loughborough could have taken control instead Cardiff Met did they saw it out and I think the game plan the conditions and everything absolutely superb we're not going to see that try however uh, you can watch the whole game on uh, Cardiff Met Sport TV so if you're an Archers fan and then make sure you watch that back in full. And now they've got a semi-final against Hartbury, the champions, and the chance to go all the way to the Stonex. It's big times now for, for the Cardiff Met women's side, but now we will turn our attention straight to the men's team out on this park this evening. You mentioned it there. Now is the time mm. of year to build some momentum going into the postseason, going into now the playoffs, where if you put one foot wrong, you're out. Yeah. That's it. You can't get your hands on that trophy at the Stonex Stadium. But we're going to ask ourselves quickly, what actually happened last time out when these two sides met? Well, here is a quick match report from the last time Cardiff Met played Loughborough up in the north. It was a top of the table clash in Buck Super Rugby last Wednesday up in Loughborough. Before the fixture began, both sides sat at the top, only separated by points difference, with Cardiff Met league leaders for the first time this year. Proceedings didn't exactly go Met's way. The visitors fell to an early Loughborough try and penalty kick, but the reliable right boot of Bradley Roderick Evans looked to start a resurgence for Met. It wasn't to play out that way though. Three tries for Loughborough in the first half alone saw them establish their dominance. Met would score a try of their own though in the opening period. Captain Joe Cowell, in a similar position to a try he was denied of on the recent visit to King's home against Hartbury, went over underneath the sticks, supported by his fellow forwards for Cardiff Met's first try. Roderick Evans would add the extras and the scoreline read 22-13 in the host's favour at half-time. Another three tries for the African Violet after the half-time break saw them sailing away with the game, the pick of the lot coming from a Harry Rosen pick straight out the arms of the Met attacking line. The Archers were playing for pride at this stage and would not be put completely to bed and fight to the end. Roma Zheng found himself on the end of a delicate pop pass from Ethan Morgan, seeing him round the Loughborough defensive effort and score for Met's second of the game. 
and urgency at penalty time from Ali Stacey ignited one final try for Cardiff Met. Jake Bond collecting the ball at the base of the ruck and using all of his remaining energy stores to force his way over. After a successful conversion, Cardiff Met didn't concede further from here and the full-time whistle would blow with Loughborough the 43-25 victors. 43-25, Dave. Yep. Now, to the untrained eye, that's quite a one-sided game. But when you take it down to paper and compare these two sides and the quality they have in every position, it's anything but a one-way story, isn't it? Oh, it certainly is. And I think at that point of the season as well, Loughborough was starting to build momentum towards the top of the table. Cardiff Met were faltering. Let's not forget that this Cardiff Met team have put five consecutive wins together this season. I know the league positions are miles apart, but there are different pressures on this game completely. Loughborough win this game with a bonus point. They are league champions and there is nothing Cardiff Met down there in seventh place would, do, would, would rather do than to really spoil the party. But then we start to think about all of the logistics as well. Cardiff Met currently in seventh place. If they finish seventh, they've got an away quarter final. They win that, they've got a home semi. But if they finish sixth and win their quarterfinal, they're away in the semi. I mean, there's so much going on. It's like putting the matrix into <laughs> place, isn't it? So I'm pretty sure if they do come second today, then they'll say, oh, don't worry, we're at home in the semi. It's absolutely fine. Now, it's not just the story of Cardiff Met this evening. Obviously, Loughborough can win that Buck Super Rugby Championship for the first time yeah. this year. As you've already said, it's very tight at the top. I mean, we can see it here up on the screen now. One point separating these two great sides and two great brothers battling it out in yes. Buck Super Rugby. And they've both had decent seasons as well it's great to see Teddy back in as well he's had a lot of soft tissue injuries he is certainly a player to watch today if you've never watched Loughborough never watched Buck Super Rugby number seven for them uh, Leather Bar is going to be superb I'm going to quickly talk you through um, the the sort of goings on and, and how various teams can win Loughborough need to equal or better Exeter's result if they finish level on points so for example if Loughborough win without a bonus point and Exeter win with a bonus point they're at Bath the games kick off at the same time then they'll finish level on points Exeter Exeter will be Bucks Super Rugby champions and that base, that's based on the count back because their results against Loughborough are more favourable this season so they've still got lots to play for. Bath are flying however it's in Loughborough's hands as to whether or not they leave as champions tonight. Absolutely and it's going to be it's going to be a team game this evening but within that team are some great individuals and I've done a bit of homework Dave. No. I know I've had time around an actual degree to, to <laughs> actually look at some game footage. It's surprising really but no I've, I've managed to pick apart uh, a bit of play here from Cardiff Met from early in the season. We're highlighting Bradley, Roderick Evans and Bingo Even Eastfish. Look how flat they are there, straight off a scrum. Bingo is your focus for this. I'm mm -hmm. going to talk you through it now because Cardiff Met end up scoring a great try off of this. So first off, though, Rory Morgan sells the scrum half, commits him to that blind side. So it means that Jake Bond's got a lovely pick and go opportunity. He's not only going to draw the open side flanker, but he's going to draw in the fly half as well, which creates a massive hole in, in the midfield for a great centre like Bingo Ivanisevic to exploit. Look at that. A seven-metre gap on the pitch at Cardiff Arms Park. And when you give someone like Bingo Ivanisevic that sort of room, he's going to run straight through it. And he does. He runs straight through it. He gets Cardiff met from their own 22 all the way up with the support of his fellow archers right up to the Cardiff University 22. And straight away, Cardiff Met are on the front foot. There's acres of space in behind because of a retreating defence not setting properly. So all Rory Morgan has to do is pass to Brad. He's set nice and deep. His back line behind him are deep as well, so they can run onto the ball with plenty of pace as well without getting in front and giving away the penalty. And look at this perfectly placed kick. He's gone to the corner, into the little bit of space we've just highlighted, and out on the wing, Jake Thomas, you'll see it now, he's going to collect that ball, and he's going he's to use his footwork. He's going to dot down in the corner, and that, my friend, is the Bingo Ivanisevic <laughs> effect of how you get from one end of the pitch to the other. So I think he's going to be a key player for Cardiff Met today. I love Bingo Ivanisevic. I also love the way he's matured in his time at Cardiff Met. I love that he's always trying to push the tempo as well. He wants to play quick. Doesn't matter if it's on a fast 4G track like it is at Cardiff Arms Park or here in the teeming rain. Doesn't always work. If you cast your mind back to Exeter early in the season, he had a tap penalty late in the game on his own 22. They could have gone for touch instead. He always wanted to play with tempo, but that's the magic of bingo, and he could be a real difference maker tonight. Do you think the Loughborough defence in the back line will be able to deal with him today? Oh, they're going to try and absolutely melt him. <laughs> yes. You really do? Do you think that th this game is going to be won or lost in the middle of the park, I I essentially? Um, I think we're in for a real contest tonight. I think there are different pressures for Loughborough as well, but we'll talk a bit more about that as we get closer to kickoff. Well, before we get too in-depth into the player analysis of this fixture, we've had time to catch up with the coaches before the game even kicked off to see what they have to say about the fixture.
Danny, how happy were you with the win last week? Well, I suppose it was nice to get a win. <laughs> uh, it's been a, been a tough old slog uh, uh, since Christmas. And uh, coming back after after that break, uh, we had some good performances early on. Uh, but like winning is a habit, so is losing. And unfortunately, uh, we got into a bit of a losing habit. But I was really proud of the way the players responded last week. You know, Leeds Beckett, perhaps one of their last home games in Buck Super Rugby. And uh, we certainly brought a performance, made life difficult for ourselves at times with penalties and yellow cards, but managed that and probably put some of our better stuff together that we've seen post-Christmas. Yeah, and I mean, today, Loughborough are a different beast. What are your thoughts on them? They're top of the league, and, and rightfully so, and uh, very deserving. You know, Loughborough and Exeter, uh, you know, both looking for that league title today, and let's make no bones about it. They're coming down here, and they want and they expect to get a win, and it's going to be for us to, to show the measure of, of who we are as a group, and the way we perform tonight, building into those quarterfinals, is going to be massive. How are you feeling about tonight? Oh, look, we're really excited as a team. We're excited for the opportunity to play something at the end of the season, so just really looking forward to it. What are you expecting from Met? Uh, always a massively tough battle down here at Kincoid. Cardiff Met, fantastic, well coached team, really good group of players. So we're expecting a huge battle up front and with quality behind as well. And how many eyes are on that title? Zero eyes at the moment. All we've got eyes on is just winning tonight. But what's the main areas you've been looking at in training for this game? Um, from our point of view, we focus on ourselves. We just want to make sure we can execute our game plan to the best of our ability. So it's all about us and doing the things that we do really well effectively. And what's the main thing you've taken from this whole season? Um, consistency. Consistency week in, week out has been key for us and hopefully we put that on the pitch tonight. Counting down to kick off then. You can see that wet, soggy patch in the middle of the pitch. However, that has not discouraged the crowds from coming down to support the Archers here on Rugby One. Let's take a look at the lineups then. Perhaps injuries forced the hand with selection, but there's a definite nod to the future for this Archers 15. Former Wales under-18s Ben Murphy, Connell Couch and Gethin Cannon all in the tight five. And Ardell Yallop wears number seven today. It's going to be his first start in the back row for this Buck Super Rugby Archers team. Familiar halfbacks with Rory Morgan and Brad Roderick Evans, who captains the team from outside half. Of course, Roma Zheng always lights up this league. And David Chuetti has played a lot of rugby this year. And we've talked much about the quality of Bingo Ivanizovic. Toby Baldwin gets his first start on the right wing as well. The GB Sevens man might not be the conditions for him today, but he'll certainly give it a good go. And Ethan Morgan steadies the ship from 15. There's been a late change on the bench as well. Horace Hopper comes in wearing number 19 for Benji Williams, who very last minute feeling a bit under the weather. And I've got to be honest, I do not blame him. It is a stinking night here, but plenty of quality, particularly in the front row with Mead, Cowell and Salt. We're in 16, 17 and 18 for the Archers. As for Loughborough, well, it's a pretty consistent team for them as well. Pretty consistent throughout the season. Davis, Plunkett and Burtonet. Burtonet comes in at tight head prop with no mink shrink today. Wardle and Scopes, Lavin, Leather Barrow and Monday. It is pretty much the 15 that has taken them to the top of the league. Miles and Tickham, Loughborough teammates, former Worcester Warriors teammates as well. And interestingly, the replacement scrum half for Cardiff met Alex Terry used to be involved with that Worcester Warriors group as well. Sam Kildun is absolute gas. And Will Sanders has turned out for Saracens in the Prem Cup this year. It is the team that's taken them to the top of the league. Will it be the team that takes them all the way to the Bucks Super Rugby Championship? Incredible to think that such a heavyweight of university rugby, of university sport, has never lifted this trophy. But it is not over yet. Exeter also in the hunt. Talk about consistency. Since the inception of Buck Super Rugby, in the league, Exeter have finished second, first, first, second, second, and they're either going to finish first or second this season as well. It's astonishing consistency. I mean, talk about a university that just churns out quality rugby players because Exeter clearly know how to recruit and know how to develop their players to consistently finish high in what is probably one of the most competitive rugby leagues in the country. Well, Loughborough out onto the pitch earlier this year in one of the broadsheet papers. Dan Kelly was talking about how difficult it is to come to Cardiff Met when you come through that tunnel. There's dead silence and then the booze. But they're going to hope to be able to feed on that from this evening. To come here and get a victory. It's not been a happy hunting ground years ago in similar conditions. 
Cardiff Met put Loughborough out at the quarter-final stage on a night just like this. And they're not going to finish any higher than sixth in the league, Cardiff Met. However, they can spoil the party. They can send Loughborough home empty-handed. And they can come away with a bit of momentum going into a quarter-final against Exeter, Durham or Bath. There are mouth-watering fixtures wherever you look. But this is the one that we've got to rise on tonight. An absolute pleasure to have your company wherever you're watching from around the world. And I'd imagine the buzz around campus has been pretty big in the build-up to this as well, James. It's been huge. I mean, honestly, this is one of the matchups that's always talked about throughout the year, whispers throughout the corridors of an elite university in terms of the rugby world, such as Lapra visiting down here in South Wales. And, and look, everyone will be relishing the opportunities they leave that tunnel to come put the first big hit in or the first big run and ultimately try and get a big win for Cardiff Met. Well, here come Cardiff Met, led by Brad Roderick Evans. And he's going to be so important tonight in these conditions. The breeze has died down a bit, and dare I say it, at least temporarily, the rain has stopped too, but the damage is done. It's been teeming down all day. It is a heavy surface, but you can still play some rugby here. Referee Elliot Mayer is out there in the middle. A suggestion of the same pink that's on the trim of the African Violet Loughborough jerseys. <laughs> I think that's where his bias ends really though, Dave. And Charlie Titcomb gets us underway. The final round of the Buck Super Rugby League season. Loughborough chasing the glory. And Cardiff Met looking to spoil the party. That's been knocked on by Gethin Cannon. And that is a raucous reception. Loughborough have brought a few supporters of their own. That's a long trip to make, so fair play oh. to every single one of them who's, who's made the trip down to South Wales today to cheer their boys on. Well, it's been a change of jersey. Jack Burtonette on the tight head side. He's wearing number 24. Murphy and Couch, as we said, relatively inexperienced at Buck Super Rugby, but Wales under 18s, plenty of pedigree. Of course, Joe Cowell and Elliot Salt, two of Buck Super Rugby's finest scrummagers on the bench. But Bryn Davis, the Ulsterman on the loose head side for Loughborough, he has been ever present. Small for a loose head, but scrummages well. And really offers himself around the park. And then it comes from Tom Miles. You've got Will Sanders directly behind the scrum, offering an inside option for Titcom. And the pressure coming on, but a first touch there for Nathan Pope. Here goes Sanders off his wing. Even Izovic, all wrapped up for winter in the long sleeves and trousers, makes the tackle on the 22. That's Lavin. We're in six for Loughborough today. Decent ruck speed. I'm not sure Wardell was expecting that, but he got it anyway. Suggestion of offside there for Cardiff Met. Referee says no, and Tickham has a dart. Good dancing feet from the Loughborough 10, and they're into the 22 for the first time. Burtonet, good gain line from him. Reese Malone in at first receiver. Bryn Davis, good patient early phases from Loughborough. Now Alfie Scopes. Look for a second like he could get isolated. A Met fan around in defence. Here's Pope. Creating some space for Kildun. No space for him though. Somehow he stayed in field. Wardell. Early defensive questions being asked of the home team as Bryn Davis gets his head down. Driven on by Scopes. Miles. He's got Tobias Monday, played a lot of lock last year, but looks comfortable at number eight now, enjoying himself at the back of the pack. And Loughborough looking to capitalise on this early field position, five metres from the line. Alex Wardell has a look, makes another metre. And Tobias Monday, great drive from Monday, one metre short. Width either side, but Loughborough staying narrow. 
Sanders is in acres of space here on this far wing if they want to bring the ball out to him. Doesn't look like it's going wide though, does it? The post protector getting in Loughborough's way. Now Monday has another go. Monday's over! Loughborough score! Cardiff Met haven't touched the ball. Three and a half minutes of pure grind from Loughborough. And they get the first points. Great patience there from the Loughborough University team. They just bided their time, taking the ball right up to the Cardiff Met defensive effort. And a few little errors in that, in that strong defensive wall, small little gaps appearing, and Loughborough just able to exploit it beautifully and get front football and get momentum going. And they've just got seven points within the first five minutes. Well, Titcombe kicked all 12 points in that narrow win against Hartbury last year. I mean, Snow played havoc with the conditions and, and with the fixtures being cancelled. But they were about half a centimetre of snow away from needing to use an orange ball against Hartbury last week. But they got a narrow win, 12-8. Exeter got a narrow win against Durham as well. And that's what kept the championship dream alive. Composure now for Cardiff Mets, so important. Brad Roderick Evans. Here's he go. Restarting. Key and Tuki, you're giving us live updates. How are you, mate? You what, Loughborough's prayers have just been answered as Bath have just gone in the corner against Exeter. Oh, that is absolutely huge. Now, I don't suggest you leave our coverage. However, if you've got a second screen, turn the volume down and stick with us. But you can watch that game live as well as that's been knocked on by Jake Bond. Advantage Loughborough. Remember, they just need to better Exeter's result today. They're in the box seat. Do we know if that one was converted, Kian? Oh, he'll be back later. We'll be getting live updates throughout the match from Kian to Kian. It's all going off here at Cardiff's Met Sport TV. We just like to keep you so informed, Dave. We like to keep you in the know. Great take from Rhys Malone. Oh, and then the penalty to Cardiff Met. One of the things I think we're going to see this evening is bags of height on those box kicks and up and unders because they're great floodlights here at Rugby One but they are quite low, so the ball disappears out of the eye line, so it's a nightmare for those players at the back to it, try and take them. It's a difficult pitch to play on with floodlights, as you rightly put just there, because as soon as the ball goes up into the air and it starts swirling around in the wind, it becomes even more difficult to keep your eyes on it, because if you look in the wrong angle, you're going to get blinded <laughs> by the lights, in the words of the weekend. Tyler Alding in at hooker today. He's been alternating throughout most of the season. But he's a safe pair of hands. Another player at the heartbeat of Cardiff Met. Really industrious hooker. Needs to have his arrows on point tonight. And that's a good start. And here he is peeling around the corner, holding. Oh, heavy carries. This much better from Cardiff Met. And a great response. And at the short side they go. That's the tight head. Connell Couch, as I mentioned before kickoff, certainly a player to look out for in the future for these archers. Met aren't hanging around here, Dave. They want to play with quick ball. They're picking and going like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, you've got Bingo Ivanizovic in there. I'd be sending him on his merry way to try and cause some damage if they do go wide. Well, that was loose ball that Loughborough didn't quite pick up on and Met keep hold of it. Three metres short, looking for an immediate response. You could throw a blanket over about 70% of the players there. That's such a good take by Ardell Yallop. Low down in the wet. And this is high tempo from Met. Great response from Met. An immediate response from Met. Try time. What a way to respond. That is the way to get yourself back into this fixture straight away. Well, the difference in tempo between those two teams scoring almost identical tries. But Cardiff Met, the way they recycled the ball, the way they kept going at Lupper, also some brilliant handling in amidst all that as well. Tough conditions out there. Eight minutes gone. Got it nearly two points a minute. But it's the first attack that Cardiff Med have, have had Sorry, with ball in hand. They've done exactly what Loughborough did when they had the ball in hand for the very first time. They both scored tries. I mean, just look at this effort. Pick and go, pick and go. Diving over, catching the Loughborough defence off guard. And they managed to get the score just next to the posts. 
Jake Bond dotting that one down for Met. So both number eights going over from close proximity. Oh, is this going to be one of those you go, I goes? Is this going to be an exhausting 80 minutes of rugby? I certainly hope so. Tickham splits the difference and gets it in behind Morgan. That was a horrible kick-off to try and deal with. I mean, he caught it wrong when he actually kicked it, but it worked out really well for Loughborough there. I, I'm a fan of the spiral. Any <laughs> spiral kick is all right with me, and that was a spiral from Charlie Tickham, whether it was deliberate or not. Yeah, there must have been a full supporters coach that's come down from Loughborough. Joe Plunkett, hooker today. Him and Nathan Langdon have dovetailed beautifully this season for the visitors. You don't often see the referee asking teams to close the gap between <laughs> themselves and the line-out. That was uh, interesting to note. At the back it goes to Titcombe. Next stop of play, we're going to have another update from the other game, but Loughborough have got an advantage here. Nobody on the short side, and that's knocked on by Jack Burtonet. Or is it? Oh, it's a bit chaotic. So we'll go back for the penalty and get an update from Kian. I'll tell you what, Dave, it's all going on in Buck Super Rugby tonight. It is 7-7, seven, seven. No. Hart re Nottingham. Superb. Well, Nottingham have been one of the surprise packages this season, as Cardiff Met found out. They've already beaten Loughborough as well. Loughborough could have the league wrapped up by now. However, Nottingham turned them over up at Lady Bay. And they beat Bath. Serious boys, those Nottingham lot. Anyone can beat anyone in this league, Dave. Yeah. It's the greatest league in the land. Certainly is. Well, of course, I've just talked about all those teams that Nottingham, Nottingham have beat. Leeds Beckett, rock bottom of the league, turned over Nottingham. So, looking like they're going to have a tough task. It's going to be either Newcastle or Brunel in that relegation playoff, that winner-takes-all million-dollar game. I think every single team in this Buck Super Rugby League will have one eye on that shape, on that fixture shape up throughout this playoff campaign. There are a couple of Lepra players who've brought some props. Well, amidst all of this, there's been a yellow card awarded. So David Chuetti not rolling away, 12 minutes in. Cardiff Met down to 14 and under the pump inside their own 22. First job for Joe Plunkett. Find his man. I know I'm a Cardiff Met student, Dave, and you'll just call me biased, but I think it's a bit early to start bringing out yellow cards for not rolling away at the rucks. I mean, that's a big, big loss for Cardiff Met. And this, a big opportunity for Loughborough. Plunkett in the box seat. Oh, excellent work. So Cardiff Met. See off the first wave. Again, good metres after contact for Loughborough. And they're already setting the latches and trying to send the big men forward. Both teams with one journey into the 22 and one try so far. Loughborough looking to make it two from two. This is a lung-busting game. Massive effort from both forward packs. Loughborough go up the short side. Still short, just short. Up the short side again, they go. Oh, great defence from Cardiff Met. Brave defence, but job not done. Burtonet tips it on. Still short, another phase. And a free kick, Cardiff Met. They defend the wave, and it remains Cardiff Met 7, left for 7. Kean, you're going to be out of breath. What's going on? Oh, Dave, I'll tell you, it's hard work, but <laughs> Exeter have just scored as that man, Barton Byfield, in under the goalposts with Exeter making the conversion 5 7 in that game. Kofi Barton Byfield. So if the full time whistle went now, Exeter would be Bucks Super Rugby champions. Oh, that's gone out on the full. And the Ultras on the far side find their voice. 
They will be loving that. <laughs> Not only with the fact that they're in fancy dress this evening for some unknown reason, but I'm sure we'll work it out as the game goes on. But they'll love the fact that Lapra have choked in front of them in a way. <laughs> They've made their first mistake. They're getting into their heads. And that's a big victory for not only the players on the pitch, but the whole club off it as well. Well, it's 30, 40 free metres, isn't it? So we will keep you updated on, on where the trophy currently is, which is, I don't know, probably somewhere on the M4, I'd imagine, between Cardiff and Bath. <laughs> It's actually stopped at uh, the Leeds Delamere services, <laughs> ready to uh, continue in whichever way. Oh, has that got out on the full? Oh, no, it's just bounced inside. Great kick. And that's a real momentum shift for Cardiff Met. Win the line out, go through the phases. Just see from the assistant referee's flag as well. Loughborough playing with a slight breeze in this first half. Plunkett. Finds Wardell. And Loughborough go to work. Cardiff may have got three very strong ball carriers sitting in the backfield ready to receive the kick, Dave, if Loughborough do indeed decide to go to the boot and send it their way. Which they are. Tickham. Not one of his famed spiral bombs, but I'm sure we'll see one later as Ethan Morgan sends it straight back to Tickham. He goes 22 to 22. A hefty boot indeed. Oh, a hefty carry and a great tackle from Chris Preen. We're in 13 for Loughborough today. Converted back rower from his school days. Former Harlequins under 18. And Roderick Evans. Didn't get all the juice on that, I think, and it goes out on the fall. That's unlucky there. That that didn't need to happen at this moment in time because Cardiff Met had just been able to march their way all the way up deep into Loughborough territory and now they find themselves defending their own 22 again. Dave, this is just, it's end-to-end -end stuff in these opening exchanges. It's exhausting, isn't it? And I think some of the kick errors have come from high pressure. We're going to take a look at uh, Toby Baldwin making the tackle, uh, sorry, making the run and then Chris Preen making the tackle. Ball didn't go to hand there at that line out, Dave, but Luffer have done well, I guess, to keep it in hand, really, and keep it in in African violet palms. Wardell meeting two Cardiff Met shoulders. Titcombe, Pre. Now Bryn Davis. Good hands from the loose head and a good short ball and the offload as well. It's the hooker Joe Plunkett, but it's drifted forward. Oh. When Ethan Morgan stopped, I think Joe Plunkett thought it was Christmas come early. That was a great running line there from the hooker. Joe Plunkett absolutely sniped his way through the Cardiff Met defence. I think he's really unlucky there to have that judged as a forward pass because the line and the timing of his run was judged so perfectly there. 16 minutes gone. Loughborough took the lead. The first opportunity, Tobias Monday from short range. Cardiff Met struck straight back. Jake Bond, almost a carbon copy. Great patience in close proximity from the two forward packs. Since then, it has been a proper arm wrestle. And a solid scrum. Great strike on that kick. Off the left boot. Rhys Malone sends it back. Roderick Evans, all charged down and gathered, and Sam Kilden with a moment of magic for Loughborough. What were we just saying about the kick pressure coming in? Sam Kilden, probably the fastest man on the pitch. In games like this, when the stakes are this high, you need a bit of brilliance, you need a bit of luck, and Sam Kilden's just had both. That pendulum of momentum has swung once again in favour of Loughborough. That was amazing pressure. I mean, just look how much time Bradley Roderick Evans thought he had. And then the charge down just came in and it was like gifting him a try for Christmas. Well, for Easter, really, the more yeah. appropriate time of year. I think he'd rather have that try again than a, than a box of chocolates. Well, how often do you see charge downs? Firstly from a winger, secondly just sit as nicely for that as that 
for the recipient, Sam Kildun. Right under the sticks, Charlie Titcomb doing the rest. Cardiff met seven, Loughborough 14. Game breaker from Kildun. It's important now for Cardiff Met not to lose their heads so early as well. They need to get straight back into this match with Loughborough, take it straight to them with this kickoff. And hopefully they can come away with their own rewards once again. With the bonus point in mind as well, if you can get a try like that out of nowhere. Oh, here comes Jake Bond revving the engine. I mean, Loughborough gobbling him up, but that's a serious collision. But again, if you can get one of those tries when perhaps you're not expecting it, when you're chasing the bonus point in pursuit of glory. Bond was trying to be the man with the golden run there. Oh, very nice. Uh, for, for us all. Very nice. Yeah, good to see him back wearing number eight as well. Jake Bond played the first three rounds of the season. Not seen a huge amount of him since then, but... Very dynamic number eight. Loves the contact zone, doesn't he, in attack and defence. He's just a workhorse, absolute workhorse for the Cardiff Met back row. He's not afraid of anything, attacking, defending, putting big hits in, chasing people down after they've made a break through his line. He, he really is a stalwart for Cardiff Met throughout this Buck Super Rugby campaign. Well, that has gone straight up. Oh, it's been knocked on. Oh, penalty. Cardiff Met, their own worst enemy at the moment. It's so unfortunate that it's such an easy penalty to give away as well because the ball's gone high, it's not quite worked out. The wind and the, and the rain, it's swirling it around, like we said, in the build-up it would. And it means that people don't retreat, don't run forward enough to play them all on side. It's just small errors. What a kick from Charlie Dickham. Hardly any room to play with. Right then, sports fans, let's have a look at Jake Bond. I like this completely unnecessary but brilliant goose step. <laughs> that's going in the highlights reels, but just for the TikTok views. Yeah, that's he's like, uh, he's that's like, what that will be. He's like Roadrunner, isn't he? Jake Plunkett gets the signal from Bryn Davis. And a quarter of the way into the game, Loughborough go chasing try number three. Next stoppage as well. I think we've got more score updates coming from Kean. He's already run out of fingers to count with as Alfie Scopes gathers that. Oh, here we go. Rory Morgan turning it on for the fans. But it's back with Loughborough. That's a little bit too deep. Oh, no mark called, though. They just want to keep this game going, Dave. A high tempo is exactly what Cardiff Met want to play with because it led them scoring a try. Heck of a boot. Tick come again. Here we go. That's ah, a good carry, but a good chase by Teddy Leatherbarrow. Takes the sting out of it. And now the rain has started to fall. I cursed it by saying it was dry at kickoff. And this just adds a whole new dimension. Morgan boxes that again above the line of the floodlights. Out on the full, Kiantuki. And there's been another try at Bath, and it is for Exeter. It's Niall Armstrong. He saw the space around the ruck. He picks and goes, and it's another seven points to Exeter, 14-5. Whoa, Exeter cruising. They are not going to die wondering. And again, they're going to be looking to rack those points up because they know nothing other than a bonus point victory will be good enough for them. As for Bath, they have got such a good side, but... They've been victims of their own success because they've had the heart ripped out of it by the under-20s. They've got players involved in Scotland, Wales and England under-20s. Speaking of which, Ewan Guy, who was a, a big player in last week's fixture for Cardiff Met, he made the most turnovers, he made the most tackles. He was ferocious in terms of his dominant tackles yeah. as well. He's missing due to Scotland under-20s call-up. Oh, brilliant take. That's really well done, that greasy ball. Is a nightmare to grab, but Cardiff Met have managed it. And Ardal Yallop has been quite impressive on his first start. Got his first cap a little bit earlier. His first home start, should I say. Well, in fact, there he is, pumping the legs, trying to get away from Alfie Scopes. 
and taking Cardiff Met up to halfway. Bingo Ivanizovic. Give that man an inch and he will take a mile on these sorts of pitches in Buck Super Rugby. Nah, he's an excellent player. As is Ben Murphy, who crashes Cardiff Met up to the 10 metre line. Rory Morgan loses his footing. And Ivanizovic in at scrum half. Artel Yalop, he is industrious, isn't he? Roderick Evans just overcooked that slightly. Oh, what a pickup from Charlie Titcom in these conditions. Malone. Looks like he's going to send this one high. Kill down on the chase. That's going to drop right on the edge of the 22. And Roderick Evans doing well to take hands away from it in the end. And in these conditions, this kick battle, bringing the best out of these backfield players, 24 minutes gone. Still, Cardiff Met 7, Loughborough 14, waiting for a break in play because we've got another score update from Keyan to come, but in the meantime, Rory Morgan's going to send it skywards. And that's off the toes of Rhys Malone into touch, Keyan. And we have news from the all Welsh clash. It is Swansea who have struck first, 7-0 to them. And how big could that play in the championship race? Certainly could. Remember, a positive result for Cardiff Met could see them leapfrog Cardiff University if they're unable to get anything from that trip to Swansea. It's for bragging rights in the beautiful valleys here. Let's have another look at this pickup from Charlie Titcombe. In these conditions, this is incredible skill. Does he know he can't put Gorilla Glue on his hands when he comes <laughs> out to this pitch? I don't think it's, it's going with Buck's rules. I mean, any additional things on the hands, that'll cost you five runs during <laughs> the cricket season. But he is one of the players who's really caught the eye this season. Was an England student last year, of course, kicked that penalty that meant that England beat the French for the first time in a long time. Of course, like a few of these players, unlucky because he was due to be professionally contracted with Worcester Warriors, so I'm sure plenty of other clubs have been put on high alert. Well, whilst there's a bit of stoppage in play, sorry for, the, for that injury, Dave, I thought I'd just draw your attention to um, Toby Baldwin on the far side of the pitch. Um, he, every time the ball's been kicked to him in that 22, he's looked to try and run that out as much as possible. Now, I know we mentioned in the build-up that Quagmire-style pitches and drizzling rain are not exactly seen on the seventh circuit, except for most recently in LA, yes, which yeah. was confusing <laughs> because that's supposed to be Sunshine City. But anyway, Toby Baldwin has looked to try and run that ball up through the middle of the park, and I think that's because he's hoping that in these conditions he can end up with quite a bit of a broken defence in front of him. Lots and lots of gaps and spaces, lots of slow and tired runners due to the boggy conditions, and actually those sorts of errors might play into his hands if soft tackles and shoulders start to go in. Uh, this is a blow for Loughborough, the captain. Captain Teddy Leatherbarrow is making his way off. A more a blow for him, really. Hopefully it's not too serious because, as I mentioned at the top of the show, he's had dreadful luck with injuries. Very talented player, but he's replaced by Brent, uh, Ben Smith, whose brother Johnny is part of the Harlequins Academy. He's not been playing rugby too long. He's a former hockey player who's come straight into the first team, scored a hat-trick against Cardiff Uni, got man of the match, very talented back rower. Kian, are you back again? I am back indeed, <laughs> and it is Hartbury who have scored against Nottingham. It's 14-7 there, a pick and go. And according to Twitter, Nottingham Twitter this is, a significant lack of jouet. Oh, well, yeah. I'm sure Dan Murphy and Hartbury will put a couple of appendages up to Jouet if it means that they end the season with a victory. But they're another team. They're probably going to finish fifth. Who's going to want to draw them in the playoffs? They've built into this season beautifully. And traditionally, they've been a playoff team, Heartbreak. Yeah, your, your run in this second half of the season is so crucial to how you end up overall in the Buck Super Rugby League. There's that famous year where Leeds Beckett went from right down in the bottom yeah. half of the table to the final at Twickenham. I mean, that sort of run is entirely possible in this league because anyone can really face anyone at this stage of the competition. Oh, that's got an interesting bounce. Oh, and it's been hopped on by Rhys Malone. That is a disappointing outcome for the Loughborough fullback, who's had a couple of great takes. Well, and you're talking about Leeds Beckett, the year where 
Hartbury beat Cardiff Met in that famous final with that last play try. That too was, uh, they had a terrible start to the season and built into it, so not where you start, it's where you finish. And as it stands, Loughborough leading, Exeter leading. No one secured the bonus point yet. So if the full-time whistle were to go now, Loughborough would be the Buck Super Rugby champions. A lot of rugby to be played yet though, isn't it? We love a bit of code. Both sets of fans making a heck of a racket here at King Coy Campus. God, what a scrum. That's not going anywhere, is it? That is 16 tough characters. Roma Zheng off his wing, beating the first man as he often does. Hear a lot about metres after contact now, and Roma Zheng is one of the Buck Super Rugby kings of that. Smith. Over the ball, but illegally, says the referee. Now, is this where Roderick Evans pops the tee on the ground? It is not. Ethan Morgan is going to pump for that corner. I think it's the right call. You know, at this stage in the game, it's not slipped away from you completely because a rolling ball try in that corner, even without the conversion, brings you even closer, but the kick's not made it. Oh, he's tried to bite off too much. And Will Sanders was almost eyeballing the AR there to say, you know what's happened here. <laughs> Make the right decision. That is so unlucky. That would have been huge for Cardiff Met to get down there and to hopefully maybe get seven more points in this fixture. But as it stands, they actually end up with no more points. Well, if it carries on like this, the second half's going to be water polo. <laughs> Speaking of which, our ward per side has been very, very successful this year. Big <laughs> shout out to them, especially the women's team who went from fighting relegation last year to being league champions this year. So I throw that in for you, Dave. This is why you're here. <laughs> and I'm delighted that you are. Delighted that you're with us as well, wherever you're watching from. Smart kick. We're looking to play in the right areas. Of course, I don't mean to put too fine a point on this, but... A bonus point win for Loughborough, they are champions. Conditions like this are not going to help with the try scoring for either team. No, and it's interesting though, they start opting for the low kick there, Loughborough. Both sides have been trying to keep, kick the ball sorry, high up into the air, challenge the full backs, look for territory, and it's not quite worked out every now and then going out on the full. So a low driven hard kick might actually cause your opposition more trouble, and I think we're going to see more of that throughout this fixture. Morgan running straight into Burtonet. Thought he might try and put Roma Zhenging at the short side then, but no such luck for Cardiff Met. Tyler Olding stayed down as well. He's on his haunches at the moment. Another high one. I hope Tyler Olding's okay because he had 100% success at the line out last week, so. Met certainly won't want to see him leave the pitch. Roderick Evans. Oh, and then Loughborough thinking about the quick one. But I think that little slip there and uh, Evan Sheldon having his wits about him. Soon put pay to that. Just settled into a bit more of a rhythm the game now after that frenetic start. Yeah, both sides seem to be a bit more comfortable in these conditions. Well, I mean, as comfortable as you can be in yeah. conditions like this. I know that you or I wouldn't be happy being out there in the rain. But they are starting to settle into their grooves, I think, a little bit more. It's been a while since we've seen any sort of major mistakes or major points being scored. So it means that now I've said that out loud, actually, that one of these sides is going to be scoring a great try next. Well, we're very happy here in the dry clutches of the Joe Towns Media Suite. Overlooking the ultras over there on the far side. Oh, that looks a big shot. Tickham has it drilled at his throat, but puts one up for Rhys Malone to chase. It's a great kick. And it's knocked on. And it is position A for Loughborough. And that Tickham kicking game is starting to yield dividends. Oh, that is unlucky. You can't afford to drop the ball in your own 22 like that especially with the kick chase like Loughborough had there. Great pressure coming in from the fellow Loughborough players. And this, is a, this is a replay of, of said high kick. Just look how difficult that would have been to try and gather. It's been a hallmark of Titkin's game this year. No 
Now Loughborough have left two on the short side this time. Sam Kildon, try scorer already. He's hugging that left flank. Will Sanders out here on the right. But Elliot Mayer not happy at scrum time. So Titcombe in that area, directly behind the scrum. He's got Rhys Malone straight behind him. Chris Preen and Sanders on the right. I'm going to talk to you about... So, as I said, Chris Preen used to be a blindside flanker. When he was playing for Quinns under-18s, I'm going to talk you through the back line later. It's bonkers. <laughs> but here come Loughborough. Tom Miles, Titcombe, change of direction. Oh, it's been spilled. Just took it a little bit too close to the line. Offside from the knock-on, so it means that Cardiff may end up with a penalty there. That's great defence. That, that's surely something that's been looked at in analysis, looking at this Loughborough University side, because that is a very well-rehearsed move off the base of the scrum. So the back line. <laughs> when Chris Preem was playing at flanker, right, you've got Connor Slevin, who's been playing for London Scottish all season, Quinns Academy, England under-20s. Uh, Connor Orisanya, another Quinns Academy still, who's at Leeds Beckett, Buck Super Rugby. Ludo Kalade, who's playing Buck Super Rugby for Bath. Brim Bradley, Wales under-20s. Cassius Cleves, England under-20s. Jamie Benson, Cambridge University. And Jake Murray, who's Buck Super Rugby for Exeter. So that is a, a group of players who are doing bits around the country, and I love to see it. That's what you call a stacked backline. Yes. That is some serious talent. No guesses, no sorry, no prizes for guessing which premiership side is your favourite there, Dave. I just saw it on a team sheet and thought it's worth pointing stuff like that out for a couple of reasons. One, it's great to see young players kick on, but two, seeing players coming from premiership academies and, and lighting up Buck Super Rugby. Great to see, and long may it continue. Absolutely. I mean, without a doubt, we've got several future international stars out on that pitch in front of us, or indeed premiership rugby stars out on that pitch in front of us. Or actually, United Rugby Championship. There you yes. go, I've said them all now. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of United Rugby Championship, Scott Snedden is here somewhere. There's a lot of, th there's a big thread between Cardiff Met and Loughborough that has been running throughout rugby for years. And we're going to hear a little bit more about it after we've heard from Kian. And it's another score in Cardiff and it is Josh Thomas for Cardiff who has got it. Conversion missed, 7-5 to Swansea still. When Cardiff score, Kian can't keep the smile off his face, can he? Still loves it. He's an archer now, but he's still a Cardiff uni boy. I don't know, I've never heard him say it. <laughs> so Martin Webdale, Loughborough head coach now, former Cardiff Met. Scott Snedden, now at the Scarlets, got Loughborough to the top of the league, former Cardiff Met. And Danny Milton nearly went to Loughborough. There you go. <laughs> You've completed the circle. Two great sports universities, two great rugby universities. And two teams going hammer and tongs here in the rain at King Coyd campus. Well, it echoes the remarks of the coach that got exiled to down under. Eddie Jones said that we were a rugby factory in a way. Yes. And I think that point just reflects that. Brilliant turnover there. Long hands over the ball. Referee Mayer happy enough that a lift could have been made. And a chance for Cardiff Met to relieve some pressure. This half has absolutely flown by. As I said, it's settled into a rhythm, but it's been such a physical contest. That's another missed touch from a penalty for Cardiff Met. They've let Loughborough off twice now. It can't keep happening, unfortunately. They need to tidy that mistake up very, very quickly. I think maybe in these conditions, don't go too optimistic with the length of your kick. It's trying to find that balance in between playing it safe and playing it optimistic. Decent carry again by Ardell Yallop. He's been impressive. Oh, Brad Roderick Evans being tested to the max. Oh, and the pressure is told. It wasn't a great pass. He still got the kick away. Some sort of discussion here between the, the line judge and the ref, meaning that we're not back in the archer's half. Oh, perhaps a penalty for the late shot on Roderick Evans? Well, no, because then they'd be kicking from where the ball landed. Either way, good field position here for the Met. 
that these opportunities don't come around very often in games like this. They're very tight, close fought fixtures, very physical up front. So the opportunity to get down into your opposition's half, like Cardiff Met have now found themselves, should be taken. And a break in play. Somebody down injured. Cardiff Met 7, left for 14. Met yet to lead in the match. They were 7-0 down after Tickham converted Monday's try. And then a couple of minutes later, Brad Roderick Evans converted Jake Bonds. It was 7-7 after eight minutes. And then an opportunist try from Sam Kildan after Brad Roderick Evans couldn't quite make the clearance. Put us where we are now. Another change in the pack here for Loughborough. So Alex Wardell off. He's replaced by Fergus Dick. He was man of the match for Loughborough students against England under 20s in the Six Nations warm-up. Loughborough have done well to see off the first wave of that mall, but now Cardiff met reset. Go again. Counting down to half time here. They're looking for a score to give them the chance to level. Bingo Ivanizovic. Again, meters after contact. And a penalty advantage. Rory Morgan thinking about going quickly. Big smile on the face of Bingo Ivanizovic. He's loving this, isn't he? Lots of hands pointing to the posts there, including Bingo's actually as well. Cardiff men obviously want to get points on the score, but want to get points ticking over. They don't want to come away with nothing again. I think that's the right choice to take at this stage. We're getting ever closer to the half-time break, and I think it means at the end of the day, you've just got to get points on the board. Bingo's leggings must be absolutely soaking. Our clock's ticked up to 40 minutes. Just a reminder, it's not linked in with the referee's watch. Let's wait for Brad Roderick Evans to pop this over for three. And then we'll hear from Kean again. He has been so consistent for the last three years. And here he is to reduce the deficit. Never any doubt, Cardiff met 10, Loughborough 14, Kean Tuki. And it's 21-7 to Hartbury. The nine has gone over again and elsewhere it is currently half time. F Cardiff five, Swansea seven. <laughs> Some great games coming up and a great guest at half time as well. Very much looking forward to having a chat. As Loughborough race up. Try and pin Cardiff down maybe create an opportunity for themselves just before half time they've got a narrow lead here Exeter ahead at Bath last time we checked as well this championship race going right down to the wire oh good take in the end by Reese Malone I think he slightly misjudged that but a good chase from Cardiff met pin him in his own half just inside the tent Tom Miles finds Bryn Davis. Brilliant work from those conducting the kick chase there to put Luffer under so much pressure and force him to just kick it straight back to them. Another good take. I'm not sure if it comes across at home, so we're going to continue to talk about it. These are tough conditions, challenging conditions. And the aerial game being fully tested by Brad Roderick Evans, Charlie Tick and Rory Morgan et al. Cardiff Met are really going to have to dig deep as the conditions worsen, but I know a lot of them out on that pitch today have a lot of Welsh Championship experience yeah. with that side of the university programme, and that will be valuable in, in games like this because you play at a lot of horrible boggy grounds in that league. I mean this with all the love in the world. This is like a tropical... Malibu weekender compared to some of the pitches that they'll play on in the Welsh Champ. But that's ideal because it means in moments like this, yeah, those yeah. are the players you can look to, the experience that they'll have, they'll know how to behave around the pitch. Brilliant kick chase. Ben Smith, the back rower, leading it. Sam Kildun was there as well. Smith with serious gas. Again, being late to the game, Smith's one of the ones. I wonder if a pro club might take a chance on him. And that one sent straight back by Reese Malone. 
challenging the channels. Titcombe's covering. Oh, what a kick! What a kick! That might well be the 50-22 of the Bucks Super Rugby season. What a kick. That was phenomenal. That is, this is now a great platform for Cardiff Met to potentially launch a threatening snipe towards the try line. And hey, they could start to upset the Loughborough halftime party. Inside the five metre channel, he's carried it into the 22. One bouncing in. Now a huge opportunity for Met to take a lead deep, deep, deep into the first half. What is Bingo Ivanisevic doing at the back of that line out? He just loves to get stuck in. Absolutely loves it. Free kick. Loughborough closing the gap and Cardiff Met getting away with one there. Because I'd look to maybe scrum here, Dave. I really would. If you've got the free kick and you can call it. Oh, look, they listen to me. Aha! <laughs> so Cardiff Met not led in this game yet. They've trailed 7-0. They've trailed 14-7. Now they trail 14-10. But with the last play of the half... They have got an opportunity to sneak into the lead. A try will do it. A converted try would be a Brucey bonus. But first things first, Rory Morgan's got to feed this scrub. They've left one player over there on the far side. That's Toby Baldwin. But he's going to go to the open side. Brad Roderick Evans to the line. David Chuetti back on the pitch after that early yellow card. Back against the grain goes Toby Baldwin. What a tackle to stop him short. But now Cardiff Met in the box seat, looking for the try that had taken him into the lead. Sheldon! Again, even Izevich is in this. So's Roma Zheng, hands on the ball. All the Cardiff Met backs coming in, looking for work. Jake Bond, one try already. Tobias Monday stops him. There's a left player behind the sticks out of the game. So they're down to 14 towards the end of the half. Now one pass out, Cardiff Met back against the grain once more. One more tip on. Oh, just short. This is agonizingly close for Cardiff, but now they're over. Cardiff Met lead. Five minutes after 40. Cardiff Met 15, Loughborough 14. That is the way to take yourself into a half-time break against top of the table. If they can get the extra two points, extend their lead by three. That's exactly the precedent you want to set for your side for the rest of the match. I mean, what a way to shift the momentum once again in this fixture. Well, 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 what a game we have on our hands here. Again, the patience, unbelievable. These little tip passes in these conditions. But then it is brutal, bludgeoning big men in the end doing the damage. It worked for the first score, it's worked once again. Cardiff Met have certainly util utilised the pick and go around the base of that ruck superbly and it's that high tempo rugby that they desperately want to play with because they know they can dominate Loughborough with it. Brad Roderick Evans is three from three. It is going to be a trudge to the sheds at half time to try and get dry, to try and get warm and to try and get up for it in the second half. It's two tries apiece. Brad Roderick Evans' boot is the difference between the two teams. And at halftime here, it's Cardiff Met 17, Loughborough 14. Do you want to do middle? How do you want to do it, boys? Middle? Uh, I see. Do you want to go in between? Yeah. Well, there are a few umbrellas, probably not enough. There's some fancy dress that aren't nearly enough waterproofs but between the busload that Loughborough have brought and the Cardiff Met Ultras that continuously turn out come rain or shine and it is mostly rain two chickens there absolutely foul um, promised you good guests though didn't we and James we've only gone and got Phil Steele
I mean, we've only got and got a legend of Welsh rugby to come and join us up in, in a much drier gantry to what you've probably <laughs> been experiencing so far in this game, Phil Steele. Steely, what's it like to be watching a game like this? Have you been to many Bucks with Rugby matchups I've been, before? I've been to a few, yeah, I've been to a few. But this is interesting because I actually played in the game that opened this pitch back in 1988. Played for a college old boys uh, team. I was playing for Newport at the time. And we actually played the college current side in 88, what's that, 30 odd years ago, to open this pitch. And uh, it's fabulous to see the facilities and the stand and the atmosphere. It takes me right back to when uh, to when I played, you know. Well, tell me about the secrets of the pitch then. You must know it better than any of us for sure. It was much wider than the, there used to be a t pitch at the top there, which is now the uh, the sort of hockey red grass. And this was much wider, uh, a bit boggier as well, but I think they've had the drainage done. It's, it's lovely. It's a really nice, uh, really nice setting now, isn't it? The, and, and as I say, the, uh, the the atmosphere is fabulous. Now, Steve, what did you think of that first half from a playing perspective? I mean, you're used to seeing professional rugby week in, week out, high quality international stuff. What do you make of Bucks of Rugby? It's a, it's an excellent uh, form of the game. I think the Welsh Rugby don't make as much as they they might of it. You know, there's some great talent comes through this uh, this Bucks League, not just in Wales but in England as well. Wales have got three teams in it, of course, and I do think that perhaps. Uh, the, the, the Welsh Rugby Union and, and the, uh, the, you know, the the age groups and, and, and whatever you ought to make a bit more of it. Have a look out for for talent because some cause some great talent has come through. In my day, we had players like Kevin Hopkins, Geraint John, uh, John Devereux. Before that, of course, it was the great Gareth Edwards, John Bevan, etc. Loughborough had Gerald Davis, John Mantle, a great player, Cl Sir Clive Woodward, of course. So there's a lot of a lot of uh, talent comes through this particular level. Have you, got any have you got any memories of playing against Loughborough then? You mentioned opening this pitch and everyone knows about your uh your familiarity with Cardiff Met as it is now, but you must have some memories. Yeah, we never actually played Loughborough because Loughborough became a university, so they used to play in the uh, the UAU competition, the University of the Athletic Union, and we played in the British Colleges Cup. So we played in the in the British Colleges Cup, which uh, Cardiff Met. We were South Glamorgan Institute then used to win quite uh, quite uh, regularly, but we never actually played uh, Loughborough. Although uh, that one of the chants was uh, "We hate Loughborough College, <laughs> we hate Borough Road, we hate Carnegie, but King Coyd, we love you." I can still remember that. I'm waiting for that. That one now tonight. <laughs> we've got three eras here, so we've got UAU, we've got Booster, and we've got Bucks. We've got all three eras of university sport. Um, what about what about Cardiff Met now? You mentioned that the players going on. We've been harping on about it, particularly in this part of the world. We've got URC that's full of players from Cardiff University, from from Cardiff Met, and of course from Swansea. Some have gone over the border to play Premiership rugby. Five of the six Six Nations teams have all got Bucks Super Rugby players in this season. It's certainly a league that people should be keeping their eye. And it's great rugby. It is great rugby, especially not. You won't see it tonight because uh, obviously conditions. But uh, it is great rugby. Be played with, uh, played by skillful, fit. Well, well, it's PE students, aren't they? You know, and, and in terms of, okay, it's not the professional game, but in terms of uh, the commitment, the backup, the, the medics, the the, the the fitness staff, the physios, the, the strength and conditioning, it's almost the professional setup. You know, they're, they're, they're a media coverage as well. That's, that's well, another thing. Let's talk about this thing. then, because this live stream is being put on uh, this evening effectively by volunteers, students here at Cardiff Met. Obviously, you and I not included, but, but we're lucky to sort of make a living doing this. But to see people like James, to see people doing directing and camera work and and all of the things to put on a broadcast it's actually quite astonishing what they're doing here isn't it well i'm very fortunate i do a bit of lecturing um <laughs> uh, on on the the the, um, the the master's course in in sports broadcasting and the that's the, the joe towns the course director who i worked with on uh, bbc scrum five just a little plug there um <laughs> The the range of, of skills that they that they that they get taught in, in the years course is incredible and look at look at the setup here I mean you could be in a, a television studio anywhere in the world a professional television studio anywhere in the world yeah we're here in the Joe Towns media suite um let's talk about the game in itself then because you are you are here to watch the rugby match thank you for giving us some time um how do you see it changing how did you enjoy that where do you where do you feel the strengths and weaknesses of either side were and what do you think might change in the second half looks to me although i was a pacifist non-tackling fullback and not a great uh, not a great uh, 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 for forward play but it looked to me the loughborough have a bit more power up front i like the look of the number eight um the, the bit of a soft try the Cardiff Met gave away with, with the charge down. I got a feeling Loughborough might have a, a little bit of a breeze advantage in the second half, although it's not too uh, apparent there. Um, and I just think Loughborough's, much as it pains me to say, I think Loughborough's forward power might tell in the second half, you know, as the pitch gets heavier and, and, and so on. Well, I want to ask you, Steely, actually, what would be your message in that half-time break right now? You know, Cardiff Met are holding a slim lead. It is a lead still, no matter how big. I think it was Dominic Treader that said, doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile, winning is winning. So if they win by 30 points or two points, 
They still win, but what do they need to do and say in this halftime break that means that they are going to get that win? Tighten up on the kicking. I think there's quite a bit of uh, uh, aimless and misplaced kicking from, from Cardiff, Matt, and basically keep the ball in these conditions. Just, just keep the ball. And I hate this. It sounds like a real sort of coaching mantra, but play in the right areas. <laughs> you know, just, just. I, I, know, I know it's, it's college rugby, and, and you look to, you, you know, look to, to move the ball and use your fitness and what have you. Uh, but uh, I think in these conditions, just keep the ball play down there what do you mean by that though Steve was you say playing with the ball in the right areas there are lots of people who won't get the rugby lingo like you or I or Dave with the dark arts of this wonderful game <laughs> but just try and unpack that a little bit more for us to make sense of it for everyone watching back home yeah simply so if you're playing from uh, left left to right as, as, as you're looking on the screen uh, at home or whatever you're watching the game is to is f f so if Cardiff Met are playing to down towards the right of the screen to keep the ball down in that right hand side of the screen to keep the ball in the left for a half because it's very very difficult in these conditions to score from from very deep from 100 meters you know deep inside your own half so if you keep keep hold of the ball in your half and then try as much as you can to get the ball down in the opposition half it's very difficult for them to score but you've got to get the ball first can i <laughs> come in and ask you a bit of a, a sentimental question as an outsider so i'm not an archer i never went to cardiff met or uic or, or the welsh institute whatever it was but one thing i have noticed is that being a part of this whether it's you as a current student or, or you as someone who used to study here seems to mean a, a great deal to people it seems to be a lot of history and there seems to be something that keeps drawing people back you're here now this evening enjoying the rugby as an old boy and a lecturer here what is it about the rugby club about the university that sort of keeps you coming back? i think it's the history and the tradition when I, I went to school in cardiff we used to have trainee PE teachers coming to us i remember the green track suit with with the archer there and i always thought i knew that gareth edwards went here i knew that jj williams john bevan uh, you know some of the greats of welsh rugby clive rollins came with brian price um, that i used to watch kids people who i used to watch as a kid and um I always wanted. I think I want. I want to have that green track. So I've still got my green tracks with top forty-five years. Still get in it. I can still just about get in it. Um, uh, but it, it's just the history of the place and the tradition. And, and you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, all the when you look at all the people who've gone before you, all the people who come after you. It's it's a, it's a wonderful place. And it's a, you can go. I, I've been around the, the world. You know, covering rugby, doing speaking, and what have you. Wherever you go in the world, there's always somebody yeah. who will say, you were Cardiff Met, were you You were Cardiff College of Education, you were South Club Organization, what year were you? Who was in your year? And it's, it's, like, a, it's like a door opener, it's like a, a special club that once you've been part of, you, you sort of never leave, you know? They'll clip that up and put it on the social media. Absolutely. I they? think we're doing it right now, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Steely, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great to chat to you and great to chat about the history of this fantastic rugby club. Um, I hope you find somewhere slightly drier to watch the second <laughs> half from, and hopefully with a little bit of warmth as well. Yeah, yeah. Where's the bar? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, boys. No thank worries. You thank much, you very bro. much for joining us. Well, Dave, we've got a very exciting second half to get to because at the end of the day, this fixture can still go anywhere. I think the next score is absolutely massive. We're going to reel out a couple of rugby cliches here. Um, Loughborough don't want this game to get away from them. I think the chat in the, uh, in the, the, the changing room at halftime will be the game is still under our control. The league title is still under our control. We need to get ahead. We need to stay ahead. Main priority has got to be to win the game, then think about the bonus point. But first job, they need to find a way to get back into it because towards the end of that first half, the last 10 minutes, Cardiff Met got their tails up. They cut out those mistakes, and that's the reason they were able to make good decisions and get ahead in the game. Now, talking about mistakes, we have got the Bradley Roderick Evans charge down. We're going to take a look at it just now, I believe, because they'll want to make sure that moments like this don't happen in the second half. Well, Steely mentioned it. The kicking game is really important, and I think... For the first 25 minutes, half an hour, Loughborough probably won that, that kicking battle and that was the prime example of it. Just turn Brad Roderick Evans, make him make a decision and by the time he makes that decision, Sam Kildun's on him. And look, he's, he's rapid. He's got a little bit of luck there, but you've got to be in a position to get that luck, you know what I mean? And that is exactly where he was. So he'll be brimming with confidence after that. Players are back out, Loughborough first out in the rain. I think Cardiff Met are going to make them wait for as long as they can get away with. Oh, the conditions are absolutely stinking. Where's Noah? Surely there's an arc that comes at this point in the day, isn't it, no? It's... <laughs> <laughs> well, if the animals go marching two by two, who do you think the two survivors for Cardiff Met would be on the arc? <laughs> Well, firstly, Danny Milton, because his calves are larger than anyone yeah, else's at the club. Is, well, Danny so Milton, that's the two calves. <laughs> uh, 
Kian, you have just appeared out of nowhere to drop some knowledge. What have you got for us? Well, Dave, we have been able to get in contact with the North and we have found out that it's 10 0 to Durham with Max Pepper scoring both tries. Speaking of the North, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh no, here we go. Geographically. Oh no, it's a. B oh. Where is Loughborough? It's in the North. The North of what? North of Watford. It is bang in the middle of England. It couldn't be more. No, in no, the you're middle. getting confused with Middle Earth. That's in the Lord of the Rings books. No, That's no, Tolkien. No, no, no. Lepra is very much in the East Midlands. Very much in the East Midlands. Bang in the middle of England. Probably marginally north of Cardiff, to be fair. I'll I spent I spent too much time down in the south. I needed to expand my horizons, really, Dave. Uh, still no sign of Cardiff met, and still no sign of the referee. <laughs> this is uh, what could loosely be described as housery from Cardiff Met, I think. Well, it's mind games, isn't it? We yeah. like mind games in Wales. It all kind of started with the Warren Gatland era. Now he's back. Everything's a mind game moment. You know, not doing this, being late to that, trying this instead. You know, is this mind games or is this just, you know, someone's got a wonky watch? Carrying the water over is Loughborough second team Bucks coach James Peters. And he looks incredibly uncomfortable. I reckon that beanie hat is going to weigh about eight kilos by the time he takes it off his head. We should actually have, we should have been asking Steely about what it was like to play in the old kits in these conditions because they those yes. shirts added about yeah. 15 kilos yeah. to your playing weight. But when I started playing, we were in those kits as well. It's kind of like it was kind of England in 2003, that World Cup winning era. Charlie Cadogan's come on. We're in number 23 in the second half. He's out there on the left wing. Former Whitgift boy. In fact, there have been a few great players from Whitgift in Buck Super Rugby. Ben Fitzgerald, he was at Loughborough. Ended up playing for England students. And Ed Dunford as well. He's public enemy number one in this part of the world, Ed Dunford, isn't he? The Cardiff University. Number 10. Kicked the winning conversion in the Cardiff clash. And here come the archers. Look, we're just showing them the setup. It's a good setup. I mean, Steely mentioned it. What he didn't mention is that you're all out here coming for our jobs. <laughs> Cardiff Met Sport TV, the broadcast masters, fully tooled up media droids. Here we go then. Cardiff Met, 40 minutes from spoiling the party. Loughborough, 40 minutes from glory. Two tries each, Brad Roderick Evans, seven points off the boot. Cardiff Met 17, Loughborough students 14. Second half is go. And Tom Miles with a pretty decent touch finder. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. This is, this is really, really big rugby stuff right now because as it stands, Exeter are Exeter Buck Super champions, Rugby champions. Yep. One thing we haven't talked about is Toby Baldwin's mullet. It is disgusting. It must make people play better. Everyone I see in a mullet ends up playing really good All rugby. Right. I'm yeah. half tempted to do it myself, but I know that my mother would probably kill me. <laughs> First line out of the second half. Cardiff go for double top. Scrappy ball to Cannon. Really scrappy ball. But it's still in the hands of the hosts. Got oh, more updates from Keane coming up at the next stoppage. Dink off the toes, and even Izovic picks it up. Yet to really get anywhere with his dancing feet, and that's well picked up by Monday. Penalty, Cardiff. Loughborough off their feet. Kian Tuki with a score update. It's another score by Hartbury against Nottingham and zero Jue again <laughs> with a pick and go. 28 7 there. So bonus points secured for Hartbury. They're going to finish fifth in the Buck Super Rugby table. Oh, and a great kick. God, that's a good kick. Brilliant kick. And un an unfortunate mistake to make again by Loughborough in the middle of the park. Sealing off. You've got to make sure you stay on your feet in any conditions, but it's particularly hard in these conditions. So it's no surprise that we'll see that happen more often. Keep your eye on Ethan Morgan. He doesn't look particularly comfortable out there for Cardiff Met. He's got a heavily strapped left knee and he's limping on it as well. Potentially looking to the bench then with you and Bowden coming into the fray. Good line-up, Paul. 
Oh, Loughborough sniffing around the turnover, but it's Cardiff Met in the box seat. Looking for try number three. Give him a little bit of daylight. Henry Lavin on the body, not the ball. Patience required. It is not pretty from Cardiff Met, but it does not matter one bit. Connell Couch. There's the latch on. Jake Bond downing his ample ballast. And left to turn it over. Ethan Morgan has gone down now as well, so he'll receive some attention quickly from the medical staff as they come onto the pitch. I hope it's nothing too serious. But looking to the bench, I've already mentioned Ewan Bowden can come in to try and slot into that gap or potentially maybe Toby Baldwin slides off his wing into the fullback position. I'm wondering if he injured himself during the kickoff, Ethan Morgan. He has been in charge. Yeah, have a look at this. This is where he got the game restarted. Watch that strapped up left leg. And yeah, he limped off immediately. So that doesn't look good for Ethan Morgan. He has left the field as well. And that's been stolen as well. This a good start to the half, positive start to the half for Cardiff Met, but left for free kick and Keen's back. Just don't go anywhere, mate. Just stay there. I am back. I should probably stay here. <laughs> Nottingham have responded to Hartbury's try with a try of their own, a penalty try hmm? even. It's 28-14 there. But there's no Jouet in that either. Oh, up goes the spiral bomb and it's back with Loughborough. Nobody wanted to know in the rain. Now oh, Bryn Davis is there, but instead it's nudged into space by Titcom. He set up a couple of lovely tries with kicks. Oh, and our quest to get the ball in the commentary position is going to wait for one more clear. So have you had one up here this season? We've had balls come very, very close, but nothing's come in to join us in the gantry okay. just yet. So the, the Joe Towns media suite is yet to be christened in that way. Joe Plunkett, having had his last line out pilfered. Well taken, no challenge this time from Met and Plunkett takes the ball and Miles comes to join him. Met doing well to come through and spoil here but they're called off by Elliot Mayer. Ben Murphy was desperately trying to be a nuisance going all the way around the edge of that mall. Pope and Tickham. Oh, he jets that one. Wasn't supposed to go out there to Sanders. But he picks up the pieces, the right winger. Smith. Decent carry from him. Now Tickham. A well-set defensive wall, so he chips over again. Just looking to invite a little bit of pressure. And he's going to send this skyward for Reese Malone to chase. Where's this going to drop? Oh, brilliant take. And the mark called. Ewan Bowden straight off the bench. And thinks he spotted a bit of a gap. No such gap exists. And Titcombe gets around the tackle. Nicely done from Titcombe. Really nicely done from Titcombe. He's going to chase his own kick. And Cadigan's there as well. And across comes Toby Baldwin, who coughs it up. And Titcombe scores. That was not supposed to happen. Roman Zheng and Toby Baldwin getting completely confused with who was diving in for that ball. So both diving in together means that they, instead of collecting the ball, collected each other. And Loughborough gets to dot down with an easy score off another mistake. This, though, is brilliant from Titcombe because in these conditions, the reason you kick this ball is to ask the question. He asked the question, Baldwin was there, chaos ensued. But look at this from Titcombe here, little dummy, round the outside. I mean, it is great vision from the fly half, and but you can see here the miscommunication. Roma Zheng taking out his own player, and then it's an easy dot down in the corner. Another change being made in the front row for Loughborough. Joe Plunkett off, Nathan Langdon on. But the pendulum, it's not even a big pendulum, it's teeny tiny movements. Cardiff met Loughborough. 
but while Charlie Titcombe lines this kick up, Kian, you can't have more scores, surely? Oh, well, there's been another try in the Cardiff game and it's gone to the hosts. It's 12-7 and Swansea are down to 14 men. Ooh, trouble for Hugo Stafston, Swansea. And seven and a half minutes into this second half. Charlie Titcombe with a tough conversion. Oh, that is sweet as a nut from Titcombe. Beautiful kick. Convert Absolutely beautiful. Converts his own try. Met 17. Loughborough 21. That's the second try that Loughborough have scored in this fixture, which has been completely avoidable for Cardiff Met. But yet it still happened. Oh, lovely nudge from Elliot Mayer. Who says refs can't do it? <laughs> Well, it went straight out on the full there, so I think they're going to have to come back to the restart. <laughs> Brad Roderick Evans takes over on kicking duty. The exit, important. Oh, that's not a great kick from Titcom. Invites Roderick Evans to have a go himself. Touched in the air, caught in the slips. Back with Loughborough. So Langdon on. He's in a clean shirt with a clean scrum cap, and I don't think that's going to last too long. So left for three tries now, one away from that bonus point that if they held on for the win would definitely mean that they were Buck Super Rugby champions, but Roma Zheng deciding that he's having a part to play in this game. I think success in this game is going to be crucial with getting Roma Zheng on the ball. I mean, last week alone, 10 carries, beat six defenders, <laughs> broke that game on on multiple occasions. They're going to have to look to him more in the second half. I think the thing I like most about Roma Zheng is he makes it fun. He makes rugby fun. Oh, that's a big shot on Sanders. You could see the whiplash. 50-22's on. Chop tackles a good one by Henry Lavin. Toby Baldwin, though, he looks an exciting prospect on that right wing, doesn't he? I mentioned it in the first half very briefly. He's definitely going to look for the holes in the tired legs of defensive efforts. Yeah. And that's a great kick to bounce out, not on the full. You couldn't ask for much more there. Millimetres from the line. Perfection on the clearance and following on from that try, I think the, the next exit was really important. And Cardiff Med have done brilliantly there. So Joe Plunkett, former Leicester Tigers, second season of BSR, played a lot of National League rugby and finds a good dart there to the number eight, Tobias Monday. As we mentioned, he's played a lot of rugby at lock forward. So he's a safe pair of hands. Oh, Langdon's nearly seen a gap. How important was that ankle tap from Sheldon? Oh. Smith drops it, scrum time. Got another clean shirt in the form of, uh, of Alex Terry coming in for Rory Morgan. He's another one who's relatively new addition, isn't he? Made his debut in round 12, Alex Terry. So we've got two former Worcester Warriors scrum halves here as we take going to take a look at Roma Zheng coming in field. And you mentioned Toby Baldwin. Roma Zheng doing a similar thing here, beating a man and looking dangerous. Yeah, Rome is great at doing this sort of thing because not only does he, he hit the challenges and hit the tackles, he drives his legs and he powers through them and he makes the metres afterwards. And that's exactly what coaches try and drill into the minds of players from a young age is that even though you've hit contact, you don't have to stop and go down straight away. Pump those legs, drive those arms, get through the tackle, ride, ride the challenge and try and make those metres. And doing that time and time again, that's exactly what makes Roma Zheng so crucial in attack to a side like Cardiff Met. What have you got for us, Kian? Oh, Dave, I didn't think you'd get me out in Cardiff tonight, but you just might. It's another score for Cardiff Uni. It's 19-7 over in Han Romney. Well, they are chasing that fourth try. The fourth try that would guarantee them sixth place. That would equal their best ever finish in Buck Super Rugby. Of course, Loughborough looking to get the squeeze on in the scrum. Another good kick and a tough one for Malone to deal with. They're looking to keep the ball on the pitch, aren't they, Loughborough, from these kicks? 
Don't want to kick to this man though. Only one thing's happening here. Oh, good stiff fend as well. Nathan Pope just about holds on. I like the fact that Roma Zhang pretends he's going to kick. He's never going to kick that <laughs> ball. Come on. Who are you kidding, Mr. Zheng? His brother, of course, yet to break into the Bucks Super Rugby team, but he's studying for his degree at Loughborough. Just like his brother, former sail shark as well. It's interesting uh, to note with Roma actually as well that much like another electrifying winger from the past of rugby, he actually started off his introduction to rugby in rugby league. Yeah. So that skill set that he would have developed about being physical in the contact area and about wanting to keep driving yourself forwards even though you may have begun a tackle probably all stems from that origin really. And uh, I think he's got a bit of the Jason Robinson about him, hasn't he? You know, an electrifying winger, scoring tries for fun, making rugby fun again as well. I mean, you can keep drawing similarities for days. Have you ever had a go in rugby league? I haven't, shamefully, and I want to, because I know that my uncles have been prodding me to for ages down under, so... Do. It's a lot of fun. It's hard, mind. <laughs> It'll feel like someone's dropped a match down your lungs, but... Uh... So after all that, those couple of carries, Roma Zheng is having the tape applied. It's expensive gear, that tape. I reckon it is probably they spend as much money on tape as Cardiff Met Sport TV spend on memory cards and batteries <laughs> at the end of the year because it is... Well, you can keep using memory cards and batteries just throwing yes, that out there yeah. now for you. So, <laughs> unfortunately, that tape will definitely be one-time use, but I hope that Roma's not going to be one-time use in this match because I'd quite like to see him keep tearing up in the middle of the park because, I mean, that run that we've already seen so far, prime example of what he can bring to this game and just for his season overall, I'd love him to score a try in this final home game. I'd absolutely love him to score a try because then that's a momentum that he can take into the summer when pre-season starts and hopefully get an even better season behind him in his final year. Shocking to think he's got one year left. He did so much in his fresh year last year. Talked about Charlie Tickham and the England students. Roma Zheng selected as well. Knocked on, but back with Loughborough and the replacement hooker Nathan Langdon. He's carried well in the short time he's been on. Tickham sets himself and sends it skyward. Oh, good mark called. Bingo's opted to get rid of the uh, scrum hat as well. I wonder if this is a... Uh, was he struggling potentially with that on? I don't know if you've played much with a scrum hat on yourself, Dave. Probably just soaking wet, I'd have thought. Well, Malone and... Tickham nearly getting themselves in a spot of bother there. That's a better kick and a good take from Bingo Ivanizovic. A loosey goosey and a spin out of the tackle. And again, five, six, seven meters. He had no right to make it. Bond. Now, oh, it's gone forward. And that is a shame because Roderick Evans did the right thing there, didn't he? Freed the hands. And even in these conditions, both teams still trying to play. You knew exactly what he wanted to do there. And actually, maybe in, the, in this sort of weather, do you just try and put it through the hands quicker? I know, I know obviously you want to do the offload. Put the kick through on the ground, maybe. But just simple hands, really. Simple hands in greasy, wet, miserable conditions. And that keeps the ball with your team as well. It's a replacement scrum half on for Met. Then, as mentioned, Alex Terry. Tom. He's been tearing it up, you yeah. might say, during the, uh, yeah, during the season so far. Tearing. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. So Tom Miles, former England under-18. Left for lucky, they're pretty deep at scrum half, and they're looking to get an advantage in the scrum here. And they have scrum penalty. Great work by Jack Burtonet. And could that be a big swing in momentum? Wow, that pendulum is moving very much to the side of African Violet. The purple power in that scrum, Mech just couldn't deal with. Not the best of kicks to touch there, but Loughborough back into the 22. That said though, Cardiff Met do have a couple of trump cards on the bench in Joe Carl and Elliot Salt. Let's take a look at this. It was patient scrummaging from Loughborough, wasn't it? And they yeah, left. You can it just in. see they get the drive on nice and early, put the Met pack under significant pressure, and all they can do is just fold and march them back. And then from the 
Lino. Loughborough have got a man in between the ball and Cardiff Met and coughed up that opportunity. It's another silly mistake. Yeah. That pendulum has gone back towards the middle again. It's up for grabs. Oh, this time it's gone over the commentary position. We might get one, you know. Get me out, out there, Dave. Yes. Give, give me the ball. So left for flat their lines. Cardiff Met with the ball in midfield, chasing the try that would swing the scoreboard back that way and make them some friends down in Devon. Last we heard, Exeter were narrowly ahead against Bath. That's currently playing out at the STV. Cardiff Met have resorted to cleaning the ball with a bib because they've run out of dry towels. Oh, Loughborough do very well, mirroring the Cardiff Met line out and pinching that Nathan Langdon. Takes it in, tick him again, sends this skyward. That's the tactic. Oh, what a good take by Bowden. Every kick, when it's taken, whether it's by Titcomb or Bowden or anybody else, there is a collective sigh of relief, and that is a sensational nudge from Charlie Titcomb, who is pulling the strings from 10. I mean, what a few moments of play we've seen just then. Like, if there was a time for Loughborough to suddenly win the ball, that was now right in front of the fans who have made the trip all the way down here all the way down to the south of wales to get behind their boys to hopefully see them to buck super rugby glory well this is a chance quarter of the game to go nathan langdon needs to find a man and he does that man is alfie scopes And Loughborough set themselves. There's Langdon at the back. Number 16, Tom Miles. Drenched. Reaches in. Wants the referee to get out of the way. Sends Nathan Pope on the way. But the ball is like a bar of soap. And another chance goes begging for Loughborough. That's two now. And they still need that bonus point score. And they're still only four points ahead. I feel like a bar of soap might have more grip, to be honest, yeah. in this weather at the moment. I mean, you saw how much Tyler Rolding was having to scrub down that ball to get some sort of dryness from it ready for the line-out, and it still didn't work, so... Scrum time. Last time didn't go great for Cardiff Met, but they've got the put in here last thing they want to do is concede a penalty if they did though and you're charlie tickham and co what would you take posts or would you go for the corner and the bonus point i feel like you've got to take the posts play it slightly smart because then that takes you seven points ahead of cardiff met and you are therefore forcing them to kick for the corner to always go for that try and actually that puts more pressure on a side than the side put on themselves Reset scrum, Key and Tuki. We've had two more scores, one going to Exeter with Milo going over for them, while Swansea have been able to get a try back, with it being 14-19 in Cardiff and 8-24 in Exeter. So that's the bonus point secured for Exeter, so Loughborough need another try. Otherwise, they won't be Buck Super Rugby champions. As it stands, if the full-time whistle goes now, Exeter lift the trophy and Loughborough lose on countback. Oh, the drama at King Coit. Three tries for Loughborough. They need one. Of course, they need to win the game as well. Oh, and that's knocked on into touch. It's certainly going to help the Loughborough effort there. I know that the, that sort of news won't be in the players' ears and won't be on their minds right now but surely it's playing at the back of your head. You know that you've got to score as many points as possible in this fixture, but I still think that they need to take the three if it gets offered to them to close out this game for sure against Cardiff Met, and then they can start thinking about going for that bonus point score. You've got to credit Exeter. I mean, they're so deep. Their squad's unbelievable, but there have been times at this season where they've been ripped apart by the Premiership Cup. They've had as many as nine players playing for Exeter and they still find themselves in the top two and with a great chance of lifting the trophy. 
Oh, I've been corrected. Exeter are on three, three converted tries and a penalty, so they haven't got the bonus point yet. Ignore everything that I said. <laughs> if the full-time whistle went now... It's the drama getting to you, Dave. It's all the drama. There's a nudge for Cadigan to chase. Where's the bounce going? Great touch, and he scores! The bonus point try! Charlie Cadigan off a Titcomb kick. The left for outside half, pulling the strings again. And they've got one hand on the trophy. Well, talk about a reaction from the Loughborough students team. That is exactly what they needed to do as the news started to trickle through of Exeter's success at the other side of the river. That is huge. That brings the gap to an even bigger margin between them and Cardiff Met. And look how beautifully worked this try is. Lovely out the back pass. Eyes up the space over on the other side of the pitch. Bingo, even, it's, even East Fitzroy can't do anything about it. And so it's a nice, easy tap down in the corner. Very resonating of the try we spoke about pre-match, Dave, that I, uh, I, I talked to you through. A lovely kick into some space and a great score from a great winger. That is almost identical to the one they scored against Nottingham that Sam Kildun got on the end of. That's a premeditated move from getting the ball in that position. And Charlie Titcomb, in these conditions, has controlled this game beautifully. And here he is to add the extras. Unsuccessful this time, but it's a seven-point lead for Loughborough. Just under a quarter of the game to go. Four tries scored. Now it's a case of seeing it home. Three points won't be enough. And if Cardiff Met can come back and score a try of their own and convert it and get that draw, they're going to spoil the Loughborough University party. They'll be raining over it even more than the weather is currently. Oh, it is horrible out there. 11 points off the boot. Oh, no, six points off the boot of Tick Command. The try as well. 11 points of Loughborough's 26. And then Zheng takes him up to the halfway line. The rain's not getting any lighter, is it? Club captain Joe Cowles on. He'll shore that scrum up, that's for sure. We're looking for a big 15 minutes from him now. This is his time to lead his side towards a Buck Super Rugby upset. Good take. Well, potentially his final game at King Coyd. Emotional moments. He's given so much to this club as well. I think there's a, there's a calm moment out in front of me. I can do it. Yeah. But he's given so much to this club, and he's such a big role model within the club itself. You know, sitting down with him and talking about what it's like being a captain inside this Cardiff Met setup. He even takes it as far as sitting down, having coffees with boys on a regular basis, chatting with them in the SU. No matter what level of rugby they're at currently or what year they're currently on in their course, he's a real club teammate and club friend to have around to make sure that everyone feels happy and can perform at their best here at Cardiff Met. Great kick chase. How good from Tom Miles. He misses the tackle, but he buys his teammates enough time to keep Cardiff Met in the 22. And he's another one who it'll be fascinating to see where rugby takes him. Because, of course, we've spoken so much about his performance in the Champions Cup. Sure, Cardiff Rugby, among others, will be sniffing around, but maybe with all the contract disputes, he might find himself somewhere else but or somewhere else. But he's certainly got all the tools to make an impact on the pro game. I, know, I hear like we've got some good masters here at Cardiff, Matt. He might be interested <laughs> yeah, in, yeah. Dave. Where's this going to bounce? Cardiff Met wanted to go dead. It's not going to. And Tickham slightly overcooks one. But there is a lot of distance between Cardiff Met and the try line they're chasing to level this game. <clears throat> I see Loughborough have brought the choir. They're singing rather poetically, it must be said, Dave. I don't, um, I don't think Tim Rice wrote the lyrics. <laughs> I don't think Lloyd Webber's going to do the score. <laughs> 66 minutes gone, Cardiff Met 17, Loughborough students 26. It's a two-score game now, that makes it different. So just to confirm for everyone watching at home on this stream currently, you can see our scoreboard is 17-26. It is 1926 as things stand inside the stadium. I think, it, I think it's 17. That's an issue on our score clock inside the stadium itself. 
We've got a little scrap bit of paper that we've been writing on as we've gone along. Yeah. It so they're lying to us. They're filling us with false hope here, Dave. Because it was 10-14, then 15-14, then 17-14 at half time, and Cardiff Met haven't scored subsequently. So 17-26 is what I've got written down. 19-26 is on the scoreboard. If the rugby gods and the higher powers that be think that we deserve an extra two points on a scoreboard, I say let it be. You know. Yeah. You never know. Andy Goob might have might have done it, and we can't argue with him. So. <laughs> Bit of field position here for Cardiff Met and Nathan Langdon with a job to do. It's interesting how Bingo Evenisvich has slipped into fullback. A couple of weeks back, we were talking a big talking point about how Bingo Evenisvich was slipping into that position for the first time in his Buck Super Rugby career, and they've now opted for him to fill the hole left by Ethan Morgan after leaving the pitch with an injury. So potentially interesting to see what he can do from that position. Well, he's already looked comfortable kicking the ball, isn't he? Making intelligent decisions. Tick him. That's going to be a kick to compete right on halfway. And I think Lavin might have knocked that on. That came down a little bit hotter as it re-entered the atmosphere. Mm. That was a very, <laughs> very high kick. Jack Wickham has come on. We're in number 20 for Cardiff Met as well. More hefty strap. It's getting to that time of the year, isn't it? Players playing with bumps, doing everything they can to get through to the end of the season. First time Wickham's been in a squad since Hartbury in round 14. Another one who had a really good start to the season, started the first six rounds. But you need a lot of luck to put a full season together in Buck Super Rugby because of the intensity and just how tough it is. <laughs> you do. I think, if anything, it teaches a lot of these players from a young age that rest is just as important as actually playing. Rest is just as important as reps, you know, because if you play week in, week out in Buck Super Rugby, the full 80 minutes, you're going to fall apart, unfortunately. That's just how it works, because rugby is such a physically demanding game. So it's even more of a challenge for those director, directors of rugby, for those head coaches, to find the right balance within their squads of moving players around at the right time, but whilst keeping consistency with their rotation. So it's, it's admirable for the coaches, but it's also a great introduction for the young players potentially going on to professional rugby who will need to be used to that and used to that sort of squad rotation um, ahead of the professional career. Do you know, going into this evening, James Cherry, captain of Nottingham, had played every minute of every game, which is quite astonishing. A Herculean effort, you yeah. might say. He loves it as well, and he's been absolutely superb for them, and they've been a great addition to the league. It's Cardiff Met, a bit of field position, Jack Wickham and then Gethin Cannon. Helped on one more time, Ardell Yallop. Again, yeah, manages to lose the game line, then win it back. Alex Terry sends Joe Cowell into the cold face. <coughs> and then tipped out of the back. Oh, that's lovely work from Ivan Izevich. Oh, but then he runs into Nathan Langdon and gets away and gets into the 22. Bit of momentum here for Cardiff Met. And one man who will always continue that momentum is Roma Zheng. Are we going to have a grandstand finish? Are we going to have a Cardiff Met try? Steph crimps on. Another new addition to the squad, outside half, great skill set. Doesn't kick a huge amount, so are we going to see Cardiff Met keeping it in hand? Trying to run the legs off Loughborough in the last 10 minutes. Ardell Yallop. It's a brilliant chance here for Cardiff Met. Again, patiently going through the phases, just like they did in the first half. No sign of the rain easing off as Cowell goes again. Oh, what a shot that is. Romajeng's just biding his time out on that far side, actually. He's holding his width quite well. Oh, oh I thought that could have gone one more time, but it's still on Yallop. You and Bowden was out there. Chuetti. They've got to be careful here, Matt. They can't have one-off runners going on their own. They need to make sure support is in quickly because Loughborough are straight in over the top every single time the ball has gone to the floor. They look a bit jagged, though, Loughborough. They're calling for players onto the open side, but Cardiff Met very, very narrow indeed. Nobody out there on the flank. In fact, the widest player is going to be Brad Roderick Evans, who jogs over to the left-hand side. 
This is exhausting work in attack for Cardiff men, in defence for Loughborough. First time they've come under any scrutiny in the second half, Assault takes a run up and revs the engine. So many phases for Cardiff Met in these challenging conditions, but eventually they run out of ideas. And how important could that turnover be? Look at the heaving chest. Those are two exhausted teams. But before the ball goes to touch, Kian Tuki's got some news. What a game we are having down in Han Romney. Swansea have just scored again, and it's now 22 Cardiff, 21 Swansea. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Swansea still challenging for that final playoff spot and you've spotted something. We've got a substitution coming onto the pitch for Loughborough University. Sam Westmacott is going to be coming onto the pitch. Surely that will be a replacement for Jack Burtonet, who has been run ragged today in this fixture. He's put everything out there. Yeah, Westmacott, they bulked him up a little bit to get him to play tight head. He's played loose head, hooker and tight head for Loughborough students. Do you know what? That is highly valuable when thinking potentially about a future in the professional game because imagine if you could go to a club and say, look, I can cover the entire front row. You yeah, know? exactly. Exactly. Back in the Cardiff Met half. Not straight. Oh, yeah, Fergus Dick under scrutiny. Again, there's been the odd mistake. I said it before, I think given the conditions, both lineouts have functioned very well tonight. It's a difficult one, speaking from a lot of experience playing in very <laughs> wet, miserable conditions in South Wales. You can't try anything too fancy. You've got to make sure you go back to basics with your lineouts. You've got to make sure that you're going for, for a move that's going to consistently work and you're going to be going for a target that is reliable with their hands in the driest of conditions because even when it gets to the wettest of conditions like this, they still know how to make sure they can catch that ball, retain possession and keep your team on the front foot. The clock ticking. 74 minutes on our clock, so we're approaching the final five minutes again. We're looking for clarification, clarification of the score. We've got it Cardiff Met 17, Loughborough 26. The scoreboard in the arena still reads 1926. If Cardiff Met get a converted try, then there are questions to be asked. Well, they've got step one done. Penalty, kick it straight down into that corner, please, guys. Guys, can somebody touch finder perhaps not with as much grip on it but given how wet the ball is credit to those Loughborough boys they've sung throughout they've sung heartily they are absolutely soaked to the core just like the players out on the pitch today and like the archer ultras on the other side of the pitch huge carry in the middle of the park and a great take as well by Horace Hopper on his Buck Super Rugby debut. He's come on and taken that one. Double tops, we're in number 19. Away go Cardiff Met. Oh, let the children play, Elliot. Let the boys play, sir, come on. <laughs> now, interesting. Cardiff Met need two scores. Do you take the penalty here and restart? Or, Yes, that's exactly what they're going to do. It's an interesting decision to make. I think it's a good one because we have a confirmation. It is 17-26. Met need two scores. Get the three points. Give yourself the chance to win the, win the game. Cardiff Met have found some energy here, particularly since Salt and Cowell have come on. Big ball carry in front rows. What do you think of this? Well, it's a big... Big carry in the middle of the park and Elliot Sol adding his weight to that ca carry. And I can tell you, for when, when he first arrived at uni, I was just leaving. <laughs> and I did get to train against him a couple of times. And boy, did I learn to stay out of the way of him <laughs> on the 4G training pitch, that's for sure. So when he's adding, adding his weight and adding his power to someone else's run through the middle of the park and latching on like that, it's only going to make metres and make ground. So just talking about this reshuffle in the back line here. So... Chuetti's gone to 13, Roderick Evans has gone to 12, Krimp has gone to 10, and Ivanizovic has gone to 15. And a partridge in a pear tree, there we go. Game on. Cardiff Met 20, Loughborough 26.
Two converted tries, two penalties. Ten points for Brad Roderick Evans. And as we approach the final few minutes here, we've got the final few minutes around the grounds. Kian, what have you got for us? Well, it's full time. Durham leads Beckett and it's 12-0 to Durham oh. with that match ending there. And then Hartbury have scored yet again. 35-14 to them against Nottingham. So Hartbury taking massive momentum into the playoffs. Durham with a couple of tight games to finish with. Leeds Beckett seems to have tightened up their defence though. They have got that massive playoff to come, fighting for their survival as that's gone into touch. Oh my goodness me. Talk about a game of rugby on our hands. That's exactly what we've got out on this pitch. I think the enormity of the situation has just dawned on Loughborough. They realise they're two minutes away from a championship win and Cardiff Met are one converted score away from ruining everything. And Charlie Tick comes down. It means we'll get a little bit of an extended break, but potentially this is the time now for Loughborough to quickly collect themselves together, come into a little huddle, just say, boys, calm down. Let's keep the ball in hand. Let's, let's get back this momentum that we had. The pendulum has shifted, not in our favour, and we desperately need to get back into this game if, I, if we want that Buck Super Rugby Championship. I mean, just this kick from Alex Terry, Stumbled with the ball, but a beautiful kick right on the touchline. That's going to be so difficult to collect as a fullback, especially sliding onto the floor because it's just so slippy out there. You stand no hope. Should he have just left it? You want to try and keep the ball in, really. Both sides like playing with a high tempo. So by sliding on that floor, potentially to lift it up to a player on your team who's behind you who might be able to counter-attack through that broken field, I can see his thought process. But personally, as you say, I would have just left that. Do apologise, it wasn't Tickham that was down, it was uh, Rhys Malone that was down, the fullback. Dan Martin, currently an unused substitute, we're in 22, he was limbering up. Massive line out. Again, Hopper looks good at the back there, doesn't he? Oh, nice take at first receiver there by Terry. Still with Cardiff Met, just about. Oh, this is chaos. Bearing in mind, the clock didn't stop, so there will be meat left on the bone here. Cowell trapped behind the gain line. And if the full-time whistle goes now, Loughborough are the Buck Super Rugby champions. Cardiff Met need to keep their heads there, but unfortunately it's not worked out because they're in such a great position. Now this is huge. I think they need to check how long is left on the watch. The referee had a look. And does Charlie Titcombe back himself to go to the polls for here? Oh, he does! This would seal the championship for them. This would, if this kick goes through the posts, Loughborough students would be Buck Super Rugby champions. Well, Charlie Titcombe, we've not made the decision yet, but he's certainly a man of the match contender. It's his boot that has kicked them to the top of the league. It was a penalty in a similar position to this that got England students the victory over France up at Kingston Park last season. He scored a try, he's kicked three conversions, and now he's got this penalty to take the trophy to Loughborough. Charlie Titcombe for Buck Super Rugby glory. It's close. It's too low. And the match is still alive. The ball is still alive. And Cardiff Mets still believe. Heart in mouth stuff. But Mets are going to have to go the length. And Loughborough are going to have to make some tackles. The belief in this Cardiff Met team that they can get something from this game. Drama until the final whistle here at King Coyd. Big shot, big tackle, big moments. Roma Zheng. Oh, a penalty here conceded by Loughborough would be huge. Imagine Met being able to kick into the African Violet half. Look at this intensity from Jake Bond still going. Remember how late 
in the first half. Cardiff Met scored. Can they do the same in the second? Oh, they've coughed the ball up. All eyes on Elliot Mayer. He's called for the scrum. It's not full time just yet. We could get a scrum penalty. We could get a knock on at the base of the scrum as well. We surely must be in the final moments of play here at Kinkoy Campus. You could see what, what Joe Cow was trying to do in terms of moving that ball out wide nice and quickly to get Roma onto the ball. But it just didn't go to hand and he knew it straight away. You could see his frustration. It's so unlucky. I think Met deserve a huge amount of credit for wanting to play in these conditions. And I think no matter what happens in this game, they have shown that they can mix it with the best teams in the league. Not over yet. Oh, excellent work at the base. Important carry. Tom Miles, what an 80 minutes from him. And Bryn Davis. An 80 minute loose head is a rarity. He's got a knee down, so it is a tackle. And Nathan Langdon offers himself. Final phases of the game, left for on the ball, Cardiff met penalty. That's not what they wanted to do. They've done it before in this game as well, but they've conceded a penalty through a silly, costly mistake at the ruck. And it's happened again here, but Cardiff met have to find touch. This needs to go out. You can't give the ball to Loughborough. It's a safe touch. That one's disappeared high over the Danny Milton stand. <laughs> <laughs> but Cardiff Met will have the line out in the Loughborough half. A converted try snatches the trophy from Loughborough's grasp. Exeter still ahead in Bath. You can see there straight away from the replay, the Loughborough players just going off their feet, not making any effort to form a competitive ruck, and so it means the referee penalises them. Short numbers in the line out for Cardiff Met. Not clean ball, but Cardiff Met ball. Joe Cowell runs into trouble. Keep it simple. That's got to be the key at this stage of the game. You are basically in the final play now. Really greasy, horrible ball to be out there with. Nothing too fancy now. Oh, this is sensational. We love this league. We love these two teams. We love Roma Zhang, but he's been held up here by Bryn Davis. Oh, this is a big moment. How has he presented that ball? Oh, Davis thought he could have won it for Loughborough there, but instead it's still Archers on the ball with the bit between their teeth, with the momentum, and maybe with some space up the left-hand side. That flag you can see is the Loughborough 22. Still with Met, still big men running into big men, still drama, the title still in the balance. What a chop tackle that is. Here's Zheng in midfield looking for work. Alex Terry sniffing around, Elliot Salt with another positive carry. Cowell pushed into contact. Bingo Ivanizovic. Looks to get the legs pumping. He's chopped at source. This is brutal stuff. Where have they got this energy from? The Lough clock in the stadium on 46 minutes. Loughborough doing so well to get up off the gain line in defence. They don't want to give Met the chance to run too many metres to gain some speed. They'd rather chop them down early, run it straight up to them, put them under pressure. Could there be some space here on the left? Lovely bit of footwork. Met into the 22, or just on the edge of it at least. Another carry from Bond, who has emptied the tank today. Fergus Dick just about gets out of the way. Nice little tip on to Elliot Salt. Cardiff Met still trying to play here. David Chuetti, a rare carry from him. This is astonishing. Absolutely astonishing phase play from Cardiff Met. Not for the first time. Trying to create some space on the left side. It's been knocked on! And Loughborough are Bucks Super Rugby Champions for the first time! It's taken six years! 
It's taken a titanic victory at Kinkoy Campus, but they've held on for the bonus point win, and they'll take the trophy home. An incredible turnaround. Before this season, they'd never finished higher than third. They've gone sixth, sixth, sixth and fourth. But firstly under Scott Sned and then under Martin Webdale, they have finished top of the tree. The full-time score at King Coit. A rugged Cardiff Met 20, a victorious Loughborough 26. I mean, what a game from <laughs> either side. But do you know what? They've earned it today. Loughborough's performance was the stuff of champions. That sort of performance out on a rugby pitch in horrible conditions, in a, in a game situation that really goes against your core values of play as a, as a rugby team, to be able to go out and deliver that sort of performance was electrifying. It was exactly what champions are made of and exactly what teams such as illustrious Loughborough are made of as well. I mean, all credit to everyone out there in the African Violet Strip today. And you can see what it means to them. They're hugging. <laughs> think there might be a tear or two with Charlie Titcombe but I mean what a game we've been treated to. Now you can see it on the far side of the pitch Cardiff Met gave everything in that game. Dave you mentioned it earlier the chests were pumping from the defensive effort from the attacking effort it's they've given everything out on that pitch. Oh they certainly have unbelievable we haven't talked about man of the match we haven't. No, you didn't want me to. That's fine. No, who <laughs> you pick man of the no, match. No, you pick man of the match. Um, I think it's. I think there are plenty of candidates. Well, look. While the players congratulate each other, we will be bringing you the trophy presentation. So, don't go anywhere. Big moments for Loughborough students. But let's talk about impressive performances both sides of the ball here, both for Met and for Loughborough. Well, I'm going to start with the victors of the league and the victors of this game this evening. I think Charlie Titcombe has been an absolute standout for that side. He was doing so, so well throughout that fixture. He commanded the Loughborough attack. He put in some fantastic tactical kicks. He also kicked through the sticks when it mattered at the crucial moments. I think you can agree with me, Dave, that he's put in an absolute wonder performance. Certainly has. Look at this. They've made the journey down. A fantastic club. Buck Super Rugby is filled with fantastic clubs. But tonight is all about Loughborough, and they'll remember this forever. That huddle, that rain-drenched, beer-drenched huddle will mean the world to those boys. Absolutely. I mean, what an honour to suddenly have as a squad. You are Bucks Super Rugby champions. Not many people can say that in their lifetimes. Not many people can even say they've had an appearance in Bucks Super Rugby. So the fact that they've not only had multiple appearances, they've put in victories as a team together throughout the whole season. They come away as champions and that will stay with them for life. Huge smiles there, but about 50 yards to their left, there is a huddle of Cardiff Met players. Um, Obviously, they'll be devastated. However, plenty to look forward to going into the playoffs. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, Charlie Titcombe is the player of the match for me and player of the Loughborough team. Yep. But there were lots of standouts in the Cardiff Met side today as well. I really think Gethin Cannon put his hand up there. He's not played a lot of Buck Super Rugby this year. He's relatively new to the setup, but he's coming with a lot of Dragons experience, Wales youth experience. And I think growing into this club over the course of his degree here at Cardiff Met, he'll become a fantastic player. Uh, another one to mention, Ardell Yallop. Yes. Absolutely fantastic game from the open side flank. I think he's really put his hand up to be picked more regularly by Danny Milton and Ian Garner going into this postseason now where the knockouts and the playoffs are going to be crucial. And then, as always, Bradley Roderick Evans had a good game, but I think Roma Zheng was a standout in the back line particularly because he always, always looked to make more yards than he, he was yeah. allowed to, really. You know, he just went against the rules of rugby and he started playing his own game, really. Yeah, metres after contact is something that people are talking about non-stop at the moment. But metres off the boot are important too. And the man who made the most of those was the man of the match, Loughborough's number 10, Charlie Titcom. Scored a fantastic try that at the time James Roberts hated. But I think as we take <laughs> another look at this now, you need to play a certain way in certain conditions. And I think he played the conditions fantastically tonight. He did. He did. Rugby, I, 
We're all taught about it from a very young age. Rugby is played with the top two inches of your head. Now, that doesn't mean use your skull as a battering ram for anyone listening at home. What it means is play heads up rugby. Use your brain. Read the pitch. Read the play. And that's exactly what this Charlie Titcombe try did. And you know what? It's fantastic and very deserving of a player of the match award as well for that number 10 who, as I say, he commanded the attack. He put the kicks in when they needed to be put in as well and he kicked through the post for extra points throughout this fixture and, of course, throughout the whole season for Loughborough. I am fascinated to see where his rugby journey takes him. Scott Snedden, former Loughborough coach, of course, now the transition coach at the Scarlets. He's down there. I know that he's a huge fan of Charlie Titcombe, and I've no doubt we'll be hearing about that performance from him at some point. In fact, I think he's probably going to be down there presenting the trophy as well. They've got the champions banner there. Kian, while we're waiting for the uh, while we're waiting for the trophy to be presented, have you got some full-time scores for us? I do indeed. It finished Bath eight, Exeter twenty-nine. Good However, work. as we can see. That came to nothing. Hartbury 35, Nottingham 14. Cardiff beat Swansea 22-21 with Durham winning 12-0 against Leeds Beckett. So with that, Durham have gone up into third place. Bath are in contention for the league a couple of weeks ago. They've ended up finishing fourth. So Hartbury versus Bath. Who did we say finished third? Durham. Durham, Durham against Cardiff. Cardiff met versus Exeter. Down in Exeter as well. Down in Exeter. It's a repeat of last year's semi-final. And then Swansea lost, didn't they? Yeah, we're working this out in real time. Swansea, yeah. so Nottingham, Nottingham have qualified and Swansea... So Nottingham um, against Loughborough after Nottingham turned Loughborough over a couple of weeks ago. Oh. I love this league. That could be a very juicy first matchup in this knockout stage of Buck Super Rugby. I don't know, do you fancy Nottingham to maybe turn over league champions? Surely not. Surely they gain so much momentum and so much belief in their side from this evening alone. And I can't wait to watch this trophy celebration because it's going to be the first time that we ever see purple ribbons on the side of this illustrious trophy in the Buck Super Rugby era. We said at the beginning of the show that a new winner for a trophy is always good news. From Hartbury to Exeter to Durham and now Loughborough. Shift in though, boys. Make it symmetrical. Come on. You'll be hanging this uh, photograph on your mothers and grandparents. It needs to be in every room of the house. Yes, it every does. Every room of the house this picture is going to go because that's where it belongs because they've done the unthinkable. They've become Buck Super Rugby champions in a league where anyone could be it. Well, Scott Snedden is the man who started the revolution this season. He's got the trophy in his hands with the African violet ribbons. Teddy Leatherbarrow is the captain. And Loughborough are the champions. The glory belongs to them. It's a hard season. It's 18 games of the best and hardest and most competitive rugby that we see anywhere on this island. A legendary sports university, a phenomenally successful rugby team. But for the first time in this era, this, the greatest era of university rugby, Loughborough lift the trophy. Fantastic way for them to end the season with such a sentimental trophy lift as well with Scott Snedden coming in there to join the team that he started leading at the beginning of the year to bring it full circle by delivering the trophy to Teddy Leatherbarrow and then crowning themselves as champions. Well, James, it's been great to have your company today and wherever you've been watching around the world, it's been great to have your company as well. What a day of student rugby at King Coyd campus. It's one all between Cardiff Met and Loughborough. Cardiff Met women ending Loughborough's season and booking their place in a Women's National League semi-final against Hartbury. But Loughborough in Buck Super Rugby defeating Cardiff Met. Eight teams looking forward to trying to book their place at the Stonex Stadium. Can Loughborough complete an historic double or will Cardiff Met have a say come the end of the season? They've all got a week off now. We'll be back with the playoffs in a couple of weeks. The road to the Stonex continues and we'll see you then. Every game, every minute does not matter. It is the here and now and that's why we love Cup Final Road Fish. over the top to his main take. Oh, Roma Zheng stepping away, drives towards the line. Part three, 
Do it the Queens of Bucks Women's Rugby. The green machine explodes. Back to for rugby, bleed green. The try is given. That was this space on the left hand side. Beautiful ball, great finish. Ridian Williams. Here goes Larry Davis, dances inside. Frieza Dobbins drops it down to level the score. 